Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Smart Things, the easiest and most affordable way to create a smart home. Protect and control your home from anywhere with no contracts or monthly fees. For 10% off any home security kit, visit smartthings.com slash twit and use the code twit10 at checkout. And by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa prepaid card when you get a loan. And by Landtronics, maker of the X-Print server. Print from any Android phone, tablet, Chromebook, or Kindle Fire to virtually any printer. For more information, visit xprintserver.com slash twit and enter the code twit to receive free shipping on your order. Welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 167, recorded on Tuesday, June 24th, 2014. We are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. I'm Gina Trapani. United in Studio. It's the episode we look forward to every single year. We can all be be here here. in the flesh. Not only are we thankful you're back, but we're thankful to have Gina in person. That's right. I'm very grateful to be here. Picked her up in the city, drove her up to to Petaluma, got her here, and so that's it. In a a Tesla. In a Tesla. It was a really (laughs) nice Tesla, too. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) It's a pretty sweet ride. Uh, We are also super stoked to welcome back to the show Michael Wolfson, Android Google developer expert this time yes thank you a little bit of a change from last time this is your third pre-io show this is kind of a ritual this is my spot i'm this is my zone i'm happy (laughs) so um i'm an android android google developer expert that's a program that google picks for um to highlight um top developers um and so that's new for me Uh um the only thing i have to say is i don't work for google and i don't speak for google so um uh, anyway, but other than that, you're Mike totally Wilson, you can Google. you can talk about Google all you want. It's great. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a nice thing. I don't work for Google, but you know, but uh, you've been anointed. Yes, so. that's pretty that's, cool, man. Yeah, Congratulations! Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. It's exciting. Yeah, and that means that uh, IO is like paid and everything. Like, uh, no, it means I get a ticket. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I still have to, I, but it, it means I get the option get to pay option my way. Okay. Is there is there a special uh, de- developer expert champagne room or some oh, sort of perk? Is there some yeah, sort the of like room. Is, there, is there a green carpet kind of that you get to walk? You get yeah, a preferred so. seating green maybe? Or, yeah. So somewhere we can look down on the map. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. I really think there should be a green carpet at Google <laughs> I/O somewhere. I think that's a great idea. Well, it was it was funny because we just we came from the city and uh, Gina and I met at the Moscone Center and everyone's there registering, getting their badges mm-hmm. and there's just a whole bunch of nerds leaving the Moscone building with their badges around their necks. So I was like, oh, I could just jack one of these right now. And get <laughs> oh, yeah. It. I could totally, like, it's, <laughs> this would be easy. It's like, but They're not that hard. I, mean, I, I, I cool. had to protect my badge. I played it cool. And my t-shirt like, and my water bottle. I had to, the, you know, protect The New Yorker it thug came out of me. Yeah. I was just like, oh, these, these guys aren't protecting their badges. You could just yoink one. You you're, you're better than that. I'm right? better than that. I know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I found a good spot in the glass to go up against tomorrow and just <laughs> <laughs> Let me I in. In, sadly. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, well, obviously, we're going to be talking a lot about Google I.O. because that's on everybody's mind. Google I.O. starts tomorrow, so we have a lot to talk about there. Both things that we think are going to happen and, uh, you know, wild, uh, you know, guessing, basically, on our part. So we'll see what we come up with. Uh, we also have to talk about the Amazon Fire Phone. Uh, pretty cool in slash interesting stuff there. Why Android game developers are very happy right now, at least developing for the Android platform, seems to be pretty good for uh, game developers right now. And uh, Facebook goes to Africa. Uh, it's a little side story that I thought was kind of interesting on, on ways to improve your app uh, when you have billions of dollars. <laughs> Basically. It's a, it's a good challenge. Uh, yeah, there you go. And much more, but we, uh, you know what? Let's run the news thing for Google I.O. It's... You, you know, go. it's your typical one. It's not special or anything. In fact, it really needs to be updated. That thing is looking it, old. In comparison <laughs> to the other bumpers, it yeah, it's really, really does. It it's really a does. sore thumb. Yeah. And the, the unfortunate thing is it's like the top one. Right. It's, it's the, the first, first one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, three years ago, it was great, Jason. Oh, Love yes. It. It <laughs> Believe me. Right. It, it was created in a quick second. Yes. <laughs> out of necessity. Uh, right. So Google I.O. It's this thing that we do every year. 
And uh, Gina, that's why you're here. Michael, yeah. that's why you're here. So let's talk about it's it. It's this thing that some of you do every year. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> you oh, did, I'm sorry, you Ron. Did one year. The first year, it was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you did a year. So. Uh, exciting, though. Very exciting. Um, and right off the top, we got some pretty cool news today. Sundar Pichai uh, basically flat out told, uh, was it Business Insider or? No, it was Bloomberg. I believe it was Bloomberg. Anyways, basically Sundar Pichai said, we're, <laughs> thanks, this wasn't there a direct quote, but I appreciate you running the the, uh, the bumper. <laughs> basically says, yes, we're going to be previewing the next version of Android tomorrow. Um, and that's about it. That's not a direct quote, though. <laughs> Uh, it's still okay to use it, though. He yeah, and <laughs> so before we get into the important stuff, what do we think it's going to be? It's L, so what do you guys think? Lollipop. Lollipop is goofy, Ooh. but I kind of want it to is be Lollipop. Is Lollipop trans uh, trademarked? Is Lollipop a product, or is well, that just a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Is well, yeah, but that was a deal, yeah. Yeah, yeah but you yeah, never know. Yeah, they might yeah. have another deal. Yeah. Is there Maybe. an L candy? Is there candy an L, that, uh, a beloved Nestle? L oh. brand of candy? Wow, let's see. Maybe, candy uh, that starts. <laughs> let's ask Google. Maybe, maybe uh, oh. Laff oh. Laffy Taffy. Ooh, Laffy oh, Taffy. Any oh, even that. someone prepared a bit. Yeah, yeah, this I know, is actually, right. actually, actually, I was filling up my water, and I saw this in a bowl, and I was like, letter L. <gasps> and I haven't heard this one yet. Uh, so Laffy Taffy, I don't know. Here we go. So here's here's a licorice. It could be licorice. Licorice, yeah. Eh. I, gotta, I love Yahoo Answers. Somebody goes, what are candy names that start with letter L? Licorice, lollipop. Um, it's not going to be lemon heads. It's not going to be lemon heads. Um, uh, Lifesavers. Lindor, Lindor balls. Lind, Lindor, <laughs> Lind chocolate <laughs> international. I'm surprised that we're actually going to see a, a new version of Android. I didn't think we were going to see that. Yeah, like um, showing off. I was hoping so. Uh, but It's really surprising to me. History doesn't always, you know, at least history at, at Google I.O. doesn't always necessarily mean that we are going to see a release of it. Uh, we saw, of course, Ice Cream Sandwich a few years ago at I.O., and that was a big deal. That was at I.O., right? I know. Uh, I don't I'm know. pretty, pretty sure could've... we did. Yes, yeah, we yeah, did. I think so. Yeah. We saw yeah, it I think so. ahead, of, yeah. ahead of release. So this isn't unprecedented that Google would do this. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously we're not going to see. They're not going to release it tomorrow. They're not gonna yeah, it. it's, it's not a release. It's just a, hey, it exists. We're yeah. working on it. This is what we're doing kind mm -hmm. of thing. And so, yeah, this is yeah. developer PR. And, yeah. and for them to announce the name, I think, so that people can start talking about it. And, mm -hmm. and this is just about getting the buzz going. I think that makes sense. You know, in years sense. past, they put the statue out early on the uh, right. Google Plus. Right, yeah. yeah. Obviously, we would have heard about that if it was out. Mm -hmm. Although, mm -hmm. if they're announcing it tomorrow... Uh, we'll probably see a statue pretty soon. Yeah, I remember the jelly bean all. statue was out yes. um, a couple days early. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. Um, Maybe they won't. Maybe they won't announce the name. Maybe they're still debating. Uh, how could they preview the next yeah. version and not announce the name? The I'm, name has become so symbolic yeah. uh, for for every... They, they want people to get behind the next yeah. version. they got to right. release the name. Yeah. I'm glad that we're focused on the important things. Like, no, what yes, is it going to do? Gotta start, how is it going to look? <laughs> it's kind of, what candy is it going to evoke? <laughs> yes. Look, some Kit Kat really changed things, Kit Kat all right? Really, and I had a Kit Kat on the way up here. I didn't even think about that. It's they, working. They yeah. dropped the Kit Kat bomb, yeah. and now there we're all, know. like, on alert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're on alert. Exactly. Yeah. I kind of want to eat this Laffy Taffy, but I know that's not good for podcasts. That probably is. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good call. That's not a good call. Uh, and I don't actually I think, think it's I, So I think I, if we have to go with names, it's probably Lollipop or Licorice. I think those are my I'm those thinking it's going to be Lollipop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so, or Luft Balloons. Or Luft um, <laughs> that's not a dessert, but still <laughs> fun to say. It's a great song, though. Okay, <laughs> so we know that's going to happen. That's confirmed. Uh, unconfirmed are the things that we're going to see in Licorice, Lollipop, Luft balloons, whatever it happens to be. But we've seen a lot of things over the past month or two that are kind of pointing to good indication of what this is all about. And remember, and keeping in mind that this year's Google I.O. is heavily focused on design. design. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything that we're hearing about uh, this quantum paper design overhaul, which is, you know, going essentially that along with the Polymer dev, dev kit uh, is going to allow developers and Google to basically take their design approach and make it cross-platform so that the Gmail that you see online is uh, similar in design and approach to the Gmail that you see on Android, that you see on iOS, and all of these things. So um, where Ice Cream Sandwich was a big design change, I think we're in store for another big one. I think so, too. Yeah, yeah it makes a lot of sense that, 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 that that's going to be part of it for sure and to combine them all across all their platforms so there's this unified thing they've been obviously going towards that for years well, yeah and I, not even i would say they've been going towards that more recently too i mean as we've seen the kind of evolution of icons and buttons and all these sort of things i think that it's it's 
you know, it's they, they've been inching in that direction. So I don't think this is a super big surprise, at least right now. You know, what the design things are will be a surprise. Yes, that that's going to be what all eyes are going to be on. Yeah, um, hopefully not too many changes for all of us developers that have been. It's kind of sounded like it might be. A, yeah, a lot of changes yeah. for developers. Mm -hmm. It does. I mean, sound they're like really. It. I mean, if you take a look, um, Brian, at the Techno Buffalo article that's at the top there. Uh, it has a few images of, of things that have leaked, in, you know, both to Android police and, and elsewhere. And, I mean, it really, the, the approach that you see in all these screenshots is very different from what we've seen in, yeah. in KitKat. And, I want to see this Gmail update. This, because it's got this done thing and upcoming, I, I, whatever, I make a to-do list. So, I, <laughs> that, that, it's, like, it's like catnip to me. I'm like, what do you mean, Mark, <laughs> Gmail is done? What does that mean? <laughs> so, yeah. um, I mean, really, I mean, looking at these screenshots, um, Brian, if you take my my device, you know, we've already seen kind of the beginnings of this, right? The G Plus app, right. when they when they mm -hmm. revised it, was a fresh new take on on the app, one. And two, might just be the beginnings of, of this design language yeah. that uh, we're going to see a lot more of tomorrow. So, uh, so there's that. Uh, Polymer, of course, like I said, is the dev kit for uh, managing a lot of this stuff. We'll hear more about that. But that, I think, was even teased last year at I.O. that uh, parts of Polymer made it into the keynote. And it was one of those kind of things that everyone went, ooh and ah, and then not many people thought about. Turns out a year later, it might actually be really important, you know, not that it wasn't important then, but we just didn't know the depth of it. Uh, what do you guys think about 64-bit support? Do you think that's a, an important Seems inevitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the transition. Yeah, yeah. The art transition is 64-bit support. Well, uh, yeah, let's, let's not jump to the yeah, art sorry. transition. I'm, yeah, still, I'm still a little gun-shy to art <laughs> after after my experience with, with manually switching was, from Dalvik to art. Oh, and, it was and early, having, man. It was early. Bleeding, you know, I was on the bleeding edge. edge. I was so excited. I was like, this is the next big thing. I'm going to get in front of this. <laughs> you were on the bleeding edge, and you ended <laughs> you up bleeding a whole lot. What's up, bro? What's I have up? not. What's up? Killed me. It totally killed me. Um, so I got a T-shirt to Dalvik. Dalvik forever. I was pro Dalvik. No. Uh -huh. um, no. I guess. I mean, I would have. Now to, with art. Yeah, I would have yeah. to imagine the art transition is going to happen. I mean, I would. I gotta. I gotta think that WhatsApp has fixed that by now, and uh, I. I haven't gone back because it burned me so badly. But. Um, <laughs> but I think 64-bit and art are just kind of a, again inevitable kind of evolution. And maybe together, reason. right? So yeah. you're not trying to put art on these older devices. Yeah, that right. Can't right. No, it. that's a really good yeah. point. But it's just these, you know. Yeah. Four, Four five or five zero, whatever they call it. That's where they, you know, make this cut. Yeah, yeah right. They're kind of building it from the ground up. Ish. Um, might as well start with sixty four bit support. That's yeah. a really good point. Um, and then we've heard a little bit about camera API changes, uh, and this is actually dates back to even last year, where there was there was a very brief uh, posting to uh, I can't remember which repository, but anyways, it kind of showed off raw burst mode. And a few other things in the camera API, and then it was withdrawn, and then we haven't heard anything about it since. So right. uh, people are thinking, you know, possibly we're going to see some uh, changes to camera. And I mean, frankly, I'm surprised that Burst and Raw support aren't already in there. Uh, so this seems like seems pretty likely. And they just released that new camera app a couple right. months since ago. Right, since then, is, right? They released their own camera mm -hmm. app right in the Play Store, which is separate from the AOSP app, right? Um, yeah. And a I mean, big improvement. Yeah, big improvement, right? I mean, the camera, uh, the Android camera stuff has always been sort of a, a place that needed improvement. Always. So yep. I think the more that they can address it. <laughs> yeah, and it sounds like actually they're talking about API, which right. is really which is important. A different and thing. from the developers, right. like, because uh, camera is still probably the single most problematic coding challenge. Oh, They're yeah. all different on it's every... It's kind of like you're committing uh, developer suicide if you decide to develop an app that heavily relies on camera because you're going to just yeah. kill yourself on support. Yep, as really a result hard. of it. Because all the cameras operate differently. Yep. Uh, it's a point of weakness for so, sure. API improvements are welcome. Yeah, sure. so Google can say, here, hey, here's our camera. Make a, make a better one. Here's here are better APIs to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It makes sense. Uh, and then I just threw here at the end um, this thing that was just posted, I believe, yesterday on Android Police uh, with a few potential screenshots of L, whatever it happens to be, running on devices. You can see the L up at the top there. And when it was uh, when that. it was Key Lime Pie, I will remember those days. Uh, it was a K before it ended up actually, you know, showing a symbol and eventually turned into Kit Kat. So, um, so there you have that. I'm sure there's going to be. 
more in the preview than what we're talking about. I, I hope so, because mm -hmm. I want to be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not everything can get leaked, right? No. I don't know. So, yeah. Sometimes I feel like that's the way it is, right? Yeah. You sure. get to the announcement, you're like, oh, yeah, I knew that already. It's just now official. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, the anticipation, for example, so, the, so moving into the next thing that we know mm -hmm. is confirmed this happening is the thing that I'm the most excited about that I would be up against the glass of the Moscone trying to get in, which is uh, basically Android Wear kind of, you know, this is it's the come you know coming out party so mm -hmm. to speak um you know we know it's coming we've seen the watches we've seen um you know some new interesting developments around watches around that but this is the first kind of you know official event that's going to embrace android wear and i cannot wait to uh, see what what it's going to be and i really think io is going to be very focused on android yeah. wear this is like, going to be the star the of the show yep. yeah, yeah that's no question about yeah. it this is like what they're focused on yeah, yeah. My I, prediction is definitely that I Android wears a star. I want a watch. I want. I want jackets. I want every kind of wearable you, you can want think. A, you want an umbrella, a, a, yeah, a, exactly. a propeller hat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just can't. I mean, if you guys, if and if you guys walk out of this thing with a watch, like if that's the giveaway, if you get a watch or the watch, get, the watch, yeah, or the or the Moto, or the, mm -hmm. uh, the Moto 360, I will. It will be next week. There'll be blows. <laughs> I'm will you very do, will you do a so video for us? And, oh my god! I totally will. I'm, I can't even tell you. I'm so excited. We did, we did this. So on last week's show, we looked at that. What was that? The Cryos watch or whatever it was. The oh, what what was that thing? The 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 it was a mechanical watch with oh, a translucent oh, screen right, right. that with was screen running Android the... Android oh. wear. And it's so and it's so Kairos. cool and like and it's uh, yeah. I'll pull back. Yeah, there it is. Ka Kairos. Oh, yeah. Um, and see, this is what happens. I should watch. I should watch our show. show. Yeah, <laughs> So look at all the interesting stuff they're they all about Android. They're wow, what a good show. They're taking pre-orders on this. It's it's not a, like a Kickstarter or anything like that, but if you have $500, you can order one in advance. It doesn't exist yet. They're manufacturing it. But it's a mechanical watch with the a Android with a translucent screen with Android wear on top of it. Oh, so you can see what time is it. And I was at a party this weekend, and I was showing someone. We we're talking about Android wear. I'm like, oh, well, look at this watch. I showed, And I was getting all excited. I haven't even seen the thing in real life yet. And I'm already like evangelizing And when was the last time you wore a watch? Like, like... Oh, it had to have been when, when the wanted G, to wear a watch. Like 07, 08. I think yeah. I, right around the G1 is when I did, when I, my watch, what happens with me is that my watch band breaks and then I forget to go buy a new one and then I just stop wearing a watch and that's what happened. Well, so, and our yeah. experience as gadget lovers has, yes. has been changed by the fact that smartphones have kind of replaced what yeah. we used to use a watch for. Mm -hmm. You know, we've gotten very used to just, okay, there it is, which is kind of the same as just doing that. Um, now we got to get used to the reverse again. Apparently, and well, the thing <laughs> I don't is, know if I'll get used to it. But I'm all even if it's neat. I don't know if I'll get used to but it. But I'm all for it. I mean, you know, yeah. how for the past eight months have I been on the edge of a pebble? Like I almost yeah. got the no, first gen pebble, yeah. and then the pebble steel came out. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll get that. I'm like, no, I'm gonna wait. I trust Google. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait, and I'm hoping the, the it, yeah. it, it my wait is uh, uh, is it comes out to be something that's awesome. I'm gonna blow I, my mind. Yeah. I'm yeah. ready. I'm ready. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to spend my life, my face, and my phone. Like, I, yeah, sure. I, I really like the idea that my that my, that my watch will buzz if I get a text, you know, that yeah. I'm not going to have to pull it out or whatever. I'm, I'm ready to switch back to wearing a watch again if I really like it. Yep. Um, I really like the video that uh, Google released about, about how, right. how Android Wear is going to gonna work. And I don't know, maybe this was obvious, but I was really happy to hear that default notifications of apps that already exist are going to show up on the phone and just work, right? So... <sighs> Instantaneously, the entire them too. yeah, no work between them, right? No work required. So instantaneously, you've got this huge catalog yeah. of apps that are going to send you know useful notifications to your to your watch. I, I'm sure you guys like I do. I I tune what notifications I get pretty pretty heavily, right? I don't want my phone buzzing constantly. I know some people do like that, um, but I, I I'll love that. I'll love if my if my watch just lets me know when I, there's something I need to see, and if I dismiss it on the watch, it goes away on the phone. That's also right. really nice. Um, so, cause I've got push bullets set up and I've got notifications everywhere. I'm just happy to be able to, you know, see it and without having to like, you know, wrench my phone out of my pocket. I know that totally. makes me sound the laziest person on earth. No, still, no, like, no, I think, it, I think it makes perfect sense because so, now we, because when you put it that way, getting a buzz in your pocket and then having to reach in there yeah. and pull it out, especially when you've got a 6.1 inch screen in your pocket. <laughs> the Jason size It's not the phone. easiest thing in the world to do. So. <laughs> now a 6.1 inch watch right. well that well that's the <laughs> that i could but that's gonna be the question now is that what do these watches look like and yeah. what is the form i mean we've already talked about will they how will they fit on you know on on slender arms or female arms you know like right. will it be this right, big old right, watch right. Kind, right. you know um but i can't wait curious. i mean i'm already excited about it like it just seemed it see these videos make me make me feel like it's gonna be magic and i'm just and mm -hmm. either i'm gonna be really disappointed or just really expectations mm -hmm. met i don't know it's, it's funny because uh it sounds like you guys are really excited about this, and I'm a very Android guy. Obviously, I love all the gadgets. 
I'm not really excited about this at all. And yet you're wearing I, a watch. Well, I'm wearing a watch, but it's just a watch. <laughs> you're the only one wearing a watch. But it's right there. Yeah. You should be excited. Um, I, I, think I, I, mean, I had a Pebble. I had a Wim Labs. Yeah. Um, I had a Microsoft Edge watch back in the day. So, like, yeah. I'm not foreign to this concept, but... Right. Uh, see, but you've I been don't burned. see much interest in this. But have you been this? burned? See, I, yeah. like, I'm a complete smartwatch virgin, yep. for lack mm -hmm. of a better. So I'm like, I'm a noob. Like, I'm ready. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to have the good experience. And part of me is like, I don't know if I've had all those other watches, if it was a paint. I, I, I don't know. If I, you know, I mean, the Pebble's fine, but it just wasn't compelling enough that right. I want to wear it every day. Well, uh, and that was really my thing was that I, I the Pebble, to me, like uh, the e-ink, the e kind of the black and white. I'm like, ah, no, I want color. I want to see photos. I want to see this. The problem is color means it's only going to last 36 hours without uh, that's charging That's okay, man. It. How, how right. often? I'm, I don't go camping. I, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm near a plug, like pretty much like... 20 hours of the day, you know, yeah, like... Taking your watch off. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. charging your watch is, is going to be a little bit of a pain. I'm going to have a low tolerance for that. If, if I, it's not wireless charge, you know, what, there's, you know, things. There's a style challenge. Certainly yeah. not as much of a challenge as glass, but, like, yeah. there is a style challenge, right? I'm only going to wear mm -hmm. it if it looks good. Like, sure. Yeah. But I'm more likely to wear this than, than glass, mm -hmm. you know, out, out and about. Are, are, are we ready for this? Uh, oh. I can't believe it just happened. We have breaking news. <laughs> we had this all worked out for you. In it was a swap ball, Brian. All you had to do was press the button. Oh, I had the, the article up. I didn't have the breaking news ready. Literally in our chat That's room, okay. it says breaking, and Brian says, got it. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not going to edit that out because I want you to learn, Brian. Okay? It's the only way he's going to learn. It's the only way he's going to learn. Right. But breaking news. Okay. So, here... <laughs> It's not when you say breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian, whatever. LG Watch, $255, launches July 7th. Uh, Pre-order pre now. now? Now? So there you go. $255 for everything we've seen of the Watch. What do you think? Too high, too low, just right? Ooh, too high. A little high. Like 50 bucks. A little high. About fifty bucks. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say just right, but I don't want the watch. I want the Moto 360. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that? that's, well, that's what, gonna be more. Yeah. I was gonna say. I think I was expecting the 360 to be around 250? this 250 yeah. point and the watch to be a little bit lower than it. Well, was. how much is a Pebble Steel? Uh, 250, I think. Is it 250? It's, just, it's better. Know. It's more value than a Pebble Steel. So. Uh, it's plastic. Yeah. The LG Depends G watch anyway. is plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's it's that's color true. and it's all that's that true. sort of stuff. Yeah, but. Uh, so, so does this mean we're not going to get one tomorrow? Well, I don't. I, I, I guess we don't have to well, that's the wait. Watch. We don't. That's, that's the, the watch. watch. Yeah. Considering this, I have a good feeling, right. and there are there are reports. So, so we're in uh, unconfirmed territory now, magically. <laughs> uh, that LG, Motorola are going to be showing off their their Android Wear watches. I'd be really surprised if we didn't see yeah. models yeah. of those at, at some point to be able to take a look. So we'll be able to see how chunky and thick they are, possibly leave with one of those because everybody seems to think with the emphasis on Android Wear right now that that is hands down. That It would be hard to believe that that wouldn't be one of the, uh, the handouts. Yeah, and they want to get these watches in developers' hands. Oh, yeah. Right? That's, yeah. What, that's what they do at That's what this is all about. That's right. what I.O. is all about. Not only that, even Samsung is expected to preview an Android Wear version of their own smartwatch. Well, they've already got Very the hardware. Very interesting. Makes sense. They so, have yeah. the experience of the hardware. They have the experience of a locked-in oh. Galaxy experience. Yeah. That's true. Sure, yeah. um, right. Well, it's like, hey, why should I have? I should have a. I should have a little over here. I should have a little over here. Like Samsung's playing both sides from the middle. I know. Ke you want ties in? Here you go. Kevin Tofel of Giga Ohm. He's been a guest on this show multiple times. He was on yesterday's Tech News Today, and he put it perfectly. He's like, you know, Samsung just likes to play the field. Yeah. And uh, they, they, th sure. you know, they, they go into every uh, every one of these. Uh, corners and, and they try it and see what works and what doesn't and uh, so I don't know it'd be kind of interesting to see Samsung kind of be okay with the Android Wear approach and not go with their own Tizen uh you know, Samsung E. More than Mary, I, I see this I see tomorrow as the kickoff of the of the smartwatch wars. You know, no, because no we because we know that Apple's I, we know that Apple's working on it. Like they, we I mean I don't sure. know if it's been confirmed. Actually a friend of mine's friend Took a job at Apple, but he couldn't talk about what he was working on. I'm like, it's the watch, isn't it? But they, he wouldn't, he wouldn't break. So, um, but you like, didn't, no, didn't break yeah. his fingers. Thought <laughs> you're from Long Island. I know, you didn't yeah. like, I, I, you didn't I, like I, break I, his fingernails. I, 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 I pulled back. On. I pulled back a little. But you know, it's gonna be. You know, it's gonna be. Um, uh, it's they're, they're coming out with one, and now with with Google being first yeah. in market, 
I, I just can't wait. It's gonna be great. Mm-hmm. The Pebble Steel is two twenty nine at uh, Best Buy, by the way. Oh, so I was hoping they were gonna less. Chromecast us on that on the watch. I was hoping it was gonna be <laughs> did like you just use Chromecast I did. As a verb? I just used Chromecast as a verb. <laughs> I, I was hoping it was gonna be like a ninety nine dollar, like shockingly low, like yeah. impulse buy type of thing. Because yeah. I feel like ninety nine dollars for the watch. For the, yeah, for, oh, wow. for the watch. Like I, the I don't Pebbles, know, maybe, um, the Pebbles one yeah. twenty five for the yep. plastic one. That's kind of. Throw away yeah. money. That's I mean, about it's not right. Completely, but right. yeah, you don't have to think close. too hard about yeah, it. Yeah, you don't have to think too hard about it. Three hundred right. bucks for the Moto three sixty. I'll, I'll I'll give you money right now for it if you get it tomorrow. I'll give you three hundred dollars <laughs> right now. But that, I mean, that's how much most people know, spend I don't on their know phone. How to answer it. No, no, but I'm just saying. But I'm just saying. I might want it. Ron. I'm just, I'm just saying that that's speechless. the price. That's the price. I mean, if you give me a nice, durable, yeah. with the color screen, it's a circular display. Like that's amazing. Um, if you do all that stuff, I feel like three hundred is my ceiling. Who knows? Maybe Motorola is the $99 yeah, watch. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have low price, maybe, high performance maybe. devices. Let's, I mean, let's remember this is what most people spend on their phones, right? Yeah. With yeah. a contract, oh, right? Completely. And this is an accessory. This is a compliment to your phone. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not a thing. So that's oh, why I was kind of hoping. The potential of that. making your life better is I so know, it enormous. I wrist. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, now I'm just doing 360 on. I saw, what did I see? Wait. I saw the. Um, one of the keyboards that I reviewed came out with a, they ported their keyboard minium. to Android. Uh, minium, minium. minium, yeah. <laughs> with an Android Wear keyboard. I'm like, oh, that's so, it's happening. It's all it, happening. It didn't <laughs> look half it didn't bad look, on the yeah, watch. No, it I didn't gotta look, say. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, thought, I, thought I didn't like how it was on glass. Yeah. I liked what I saw on the watch. Yeah. There so there you go. Uh, so other things. Let's see here. There's other things? <clears throat> no. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're like maybe halfway through Sorry. this thing. Uh, unconfirmed Google Play Fitness. We've heard about uh, kind of more of an expansion of this and with the efforts in wearables and the tie-in between wearable, wearables and fitness uh, apps and, you know, the, the craze around it, I wouldn't be surprised at all to hear something about this as well. I don't know how that ties in necessarily with the Guatch. Well, because it's going to work with the Guatch. Right. And this, have, we talked about this a little last this week. This gets yeah. developers porting their apps to Android Wear, right? Because the, the, the yeah. Google Play Fitness provides all the APIs. If your app counts steps or does heart rate stuff or any sort of health stuff, right, that's what you're going to do. I'm sure that developers, iOS developers are getting courted by Apple right now under NDA about, you know, whatever, hooking sure. their stuff into mm-hmm. whatever Apple's fitness uh, API is as well. Um, but yeah, no, this is totally just about like getting developers started on these apps. You get, me, you get me a Moto 360 with Runtastic on there and <laughs> I will wear that watch when I go running and I'll use it to listen to my podcasts and it, like it, it all, it like, it's a step further to this whole kind of, you know, kind of, um, you know. How do you listen to your podcast? Your podcast with well, your no, with watch. my phone. My phone would be in my pocket, so. And you control and it. And like I control watch. it with the watch. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And right. Runtastic, I can oh, see the okay. whole thing, and okay. I can do, yeah, yeah. That, totally. I'm, I'm on board. Mm-hmm. That's so. probably available out of the box tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I think the use case you just described is going to be uh, available out of the box, yeah. that experience. I can't wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah. Android TV. Um, though, interestingly, like there's such an emphasis on where and there are a lot of sessions to back it up. So, you know, that's going to be a big deal. Android TV, there are no really like no living TV room slash living room yeah. sessions. It could be, you know, at IO, this definitely happens where they do the keynote and then suddenly you get out and... Well, oh, there are, you know, four or five new sessions that just opened up. Yeah. Um, That's, but that'll I, definitely happen, yeah. Are there are there spots on the calendar that are reserved for opening up later? And if not, is that how it was done in the past? That's what I'm uh, trying to remember. You don't remember I if can't there remember were, if in like, the past spots. it was, like, to be announced. Yeah, there were just yeah. Wasn't there. They're yeah. just, like, yeah. named very generic mm. things. And then like suddenly the future they, of your TV. Yeah, and in the past yeah. they yeah. changed yeah. things, too. So they and may they have said, things, yeah. uh, whatever, you know, intro to XYZ and... Uh, they change it at the last minute to... And then they pull, they they pull the green carpet from... Listen, that exactly. You cannot relax at I.O. Anything can change Anything at any moment. It just is. <laughs> seriously, you know... It's the most exciting uh, it really conference is. that you haven't gone to in a couple of years. I'm really sorry, Ron. I'm really sorry. We'll get so you there fair. one of these days. So I watched our... Um, I reviewed our... Uh, Alabama Android from last year. Where no, we more, gave our predictions. Yeah. I only have one show to review for wow. myself. You know, it's, <laughs> that's the last one I was on. Okay. So. All right, all right. Um, but both you me only and watch Wall, it when you're on. Oh no, no I watch it every week. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw last week. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, so what were you saying? Um, anyway, we were talking last year about uh, what we wanted to see out of IO last year, and it was Android at home. I mean, I really want to yep. see this a TV box. Yep. Yeah. Um, I want to see it last year. I want to see it two years ago. Um, it doesn't mean we'll see it this year, but I really want to see something that's Android at home, um, n- new UI. And the other thing I really want to see is a remote control. 
Interesting. Uh, for, like the, physical for the device. For TV. Or the, yes. or the Android TV or whatever. That's not your phone? Or your it's watch? It's not my phone, yes. Specifically. Or your watch? Interesting. Hmm. You think they do that? Well, I mean, I hope that the device has it. Yeah. Because wow. that seems to be the weak point of all. I've had a lot of Google TV devices, and the remotes are always terrible. And I think people, I, well, I can't speak for people. I can speak for myself. <laughs> or I really or want a remote for-, for my TV. Yeah. I don't right. want to use my telephone for that. Interesting. See, I, I've gotten really used to using my phone to control my Chromecast, though. And the more <laughs> yeah, I do that, the more yeah. intuitive is, it is for me and the more I want more of it. But, yeah, I see what you're saying, though. At least with the Chromecast, at the same time, it's spread out into multiple apps. So I still have to remember to launch the app and go into it and then hit the button and everything. But at the same time, on the other, on the other side, uh, Android TV, from what we know, kind of taps into the ability for Android to look into apps find content and then surface it. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe that makes it easier to control it from your, well, your you, phone and not yeah. a frustrating experience. Yeah, too. I don't have to go into all the uh, menus and because that can be challenging when the remote doesn't respond. Or Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to imagine that, that, you know, last time at I.O., Chromecast didn't exist. And yeah. now we're in a world that has Chromecast existing, which, by the way, the and I, I was I was talking about this on the drive up. This past weekend was my Chromecast renaissance. I am fully on board. Oh, I like I it, 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 I'm I, I I see the light now. It just took this many months, but I'm there you go. loved we it. Him, yeah. Loved it. Yeah. it was, you can th- you can thank the World Cup for it. The, <laughs> once once the Watch ESPN app kicked in and it was like super I, HD. Yes, I I oh God, it was beautiful. And I figured out how to hook it up to my stereo, so the audio is coming out of the good stereo, mm-hmm. so it's all good. Um, oh, but so you got to really got to wonder whatever they're doing with Android TV, are they not gonna are They've got to apply some learning from what they've gotten from Chromecast. Is it going to be a hybrid device? Is it going to be? I think it's going to be a hybrid unique? device. I think yeah. you're going to be able to cast to the Android. Yeah, TV. yeah. And if, right. it, you, yep. if you can't cast to it, then they have failed because yeah, yeah. that's a, a huge missed opportunity. And yep. uh, they can capitalize on what they've done with Chromecast to offer something that you know enables more, like yeah. gaming, or you know, just a more yeah. powerful gaming kind of obviously user. The- yeah. Interface thing that everybody experience. wants, or yeah. I want as well. I, again, not speaking for everybody. <laughs> you are everybody. You are the everybody. <laughs> I don't think Google t- Android TV is going to happen, you guys. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. That's what I'm saying. She's been, been you've been against it. Been the, against so, if, it. so doing a simple find and page on on the schedule. Yeah. Um, there's four sessions that mention cast. There's several things about enabling cast in your in your application using the cast. Yeah. And okay, fine. If you do a search for Android, there are 50 mentions of the word Android, and of course, there's the what's new with Android, which is probably the session that's going to describe, you know, what the the new the new lollipop, basically version L. I just I don't see anything here that looks like it is going to is Android TV. Yeah. Um, other than I get, well, I don't know this, if this is stepping ahead in the um, rundown, what but the Nest that? stuff. Um, I was just going there. The as well, Android, well, okay, yeah. now Android you're talking. Yeah, yeah. Nest drop cam. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that the fact that the Nest buys drop cam last week. And then, I don't know if you guys saw, but there was like an explosion of articles about Nest today. Like there was a piece in the New York Times. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. I feel like we're being primed for some interesting Nest integration. Kind yeah, and of, there you know. is a Nest API right. uh, talk yeah. on the schedule. So, yeah. and, and, of course, again, stepping into the ahead in the uh, rundown, oh, okay. they announced their developer um, uh, uh, group today, Right, Nest mm-hmm. developer organization. So, uh, I mean, clearly that's... Yeah, there's good. There's gonna be. I think Nest is gonna play a big part of that kind of, whether it's Google at home or Android. Yeah, at home but it seems it. like it would be pretty quick integration. Yes. they only bought Nest a couple yeah. months ago. No, they bought Nest a while ago, didn't they? Like a year ago, no. didn't they? Or a while ago? No. So I, have I lost any sort of? Uh, yeah, you've, uh, Nest uh, appears uh, on the schedule. Well, no, it was, as much it, was as cast. it was January. Was it January? It was right after the holidays because remember oh, okay. before the holidays we were doing our so five months. We were doing our twenty four. We were doing our twenty fourteen predictions, and I said I think Google's going to buy That's Nest. That's right, you did. And then yes. like a week later, I was right. You got that one. So I did. Yeah. Um, that was like the best home run I've hit all year. By the way, <laughs> like seriously, like it <laughs> says that was February twelfth. February twelfth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh no no Jan- January thirteenth twenty fourteenth. Look at Apple. Google just bought okay. Nest for three point two billion. Yeah yeah. Cool. So yeah. in around there January. Yeah, yeah. sure. So, yeah, it's possible it could be kind of lumped into that category. But uh, finally, we'll hear more probably about Android at home, at least to some capacity. Uh, Well, I mean, maybe we won't, but um, it's probably possible after all this Nest stuff and Mm -hmm. now Dropcam. So uh, cool stuff there. Uh, Android in the car is another thing that we've heard off and on about, seen a lot of kind of leaked screenshots. Uh, Of course, the Open Automotive Alliance uh, from January has uh, has people thinking that we're going to hear something about it, but is it I/O? I, I don't know. Again, it's it's hard to know whether there there've been enough uh, breadcrumbs to lead to it happening at I/O. Yeah, but Unclear. I would love to see it. 
I hope that, I hope actually that would be a great thing for, to be part of of mm -hmm. L more more of an emphasis on you know having a, a separate mode for the car because it's it's really important. Yeah. Uh, like, it, it seems like what L is or actually the direction of Android is they want to be on every screen that you have. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, yeah, with Wear and with uh, Auto and of course you know I think that's what uh, this next iteration of Android is is getting Android out everywhere. No longer it's just a phone or tablets. It's any screen or any, any screen that you have. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. not any screen, every screen actually. Oh, look at wow! Are you sure you don't speak for Google? Uh, I don't. <laughs> you gotta get that marketing line right down, man. Jeez. <laughs> not uh, any I screen. mean, for instance, they were talking every about Nest. Yeah. They were talking about putting Google Now on Nest. Today yeah. was one of their yeah. like. Yeah. Oh, so Google Now on Nest right. would be so cool. Uh, yep. Get into your house and you know oh, it knows your home it. and does this things. Is the future. For you. It's all happening. <laughs> <laughs> so excited! It's all happening. <laughs> okay, we uh, we got to move this sh this ship along. Although I guess we don't really have a hard out today, uh, yeah. so we could go all night. We're going and doing six hour show. Let's do it. <laughs> We're gonna go through every Breaking app records. we've ever installed. That's right. Starting Buckle with episode, in, folks. Starting with our beta episodes. <laughs> we've uh, got the bandwidth. Let's do it. <laughs> Come on. We'll take over the studio. I, I don't think I can survive. I know. I'm sorry. I don't think I can survive. Uh, so let's talk about some things that are probably pretty unlikely. Android still. Silver. We've heard a lot about that. This yep. is the saying goodbye to the Nexus program, saying hello to more of an expanded kind of marketing effort on Google's part to uh, make people understand why uh, vanilla Android is is good and that there are a lot of great, uh, there's lots of great hardware to, to back it up. Uh, probably more likely to happen towards the end of the year or the beginning of next year from what we're hearing and still might actually be a Nexus device or two that happens no. in between now and then anyways. So... But who knows? Maybe we'll hear something about it. But I think hearing something about it is going to kind of shoot keep, shoot themselves in the foot in, in the foot in some ways, and especially at a developer conference where people love the Nexus devices. Yeah. yeah. If that yeah. signals the end of Nexus, people probably wouldn't be too happy to hear it. Yeah. Th IO. That was my thought: is know your audience. Is yeah. a developers yeah. conference, so this is, seems to be more consumer facing, more kind of consumer yeah. marketing. I, I expect to hear this in September. You know, or August. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And I don't think it's gonna be called Android Silver. I'm increasingly convinced that Android is a developer brand, not a consumer brand, and this is a consumer program. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just, Google Silver. Go yeah, I mean, if you look at Nexus and Google Play Edition, right? Like Google's creating the Google Experience phone. That's how they're gonna mm -hmm. differentiate themselves against the Fire Phone and the Samsung phones, right? It's the Google Experience phone, so the real the Google phone, which is different. I don't know, maybe not different. Pure Google is different than the Samsung phone with all the Google stuff, but also all the Samsung stuff. So, I don't know, just a mm -hmm. thought. You can't beat that pure Google. Pure Google. Pure Google. Pure. I, just, I like my, my Google Pure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of Nexus, we started hearing some and, and seeing some photos, actually, of the HTC Volantis. No, no, no. We don't know if that's going to be the official name. It's a nine-inch Nexus tablet, potentially the last Nexus tablet uh, made by HTC, of course, uh, before Android Silver. Uh, probably not going to hear about this, but, uh, you know, the screens and things that we're kind of hearing about, it sounds like it's possibly likely that HTC might get its Nexus before the end of Nexus. Yeah. <laughs> Sneaking in right, yeah, right at the buzzer. Right. You've, yeah. you've asked for years. Yeah. Here it is. There you go. Nexus is gone. Oh, oh and we're shutting it cool down. Yeah, the oh, one the real way, interesting sorry. thing about that device is it's a 4-3 screen ratio, which yeah. is unique for Android, and, yeah. and the same as iPad mini. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a really interesting, unique... Uh, obviously, Android has all different shapes and sizes, but for a um, Nexus device that has that different screen ratio, yeah. that's a big yeah. departure. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Details on consumer version of Glass, probably not going to happen, and uh, probably even more likely not to happen, considering that there was information released today, actually, of revised hardware for Glass. Uh, original Glass Dronauts are not going to get an automatic upgrade like they did with the previous version, so I, I would imagine that means it's kind of end of the line for us. We, we have what we have, and if you want another one, if you want another one, you pay up. Uh, again, uh, but it also probably means that we aren't close to a consumer release on Glass, and for them to release this the day before I/O, probably means we're not going to hear a whole lot about the next version of Glass. But yeah. who knows? Yeah, I mean, this is this is Google's way of being like, but, but you didn't talk about Glass. It's like, oh yeah, we Glass news this week. This yeah. was the new, you know, right? right? They're slipping <laughs> like, little things yeah, yeah, in let's here. Yeah, get that and there. out of the way. We're not going to mention it during the keynote, but that doesn't mean it's dead, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So that makes sense. Exactly. Probably a de-emphasis on Google Plus. 
And that by that we mean, um, you know, Google Plus has gone through a lot of changes on the, in the kind of uh, executive uh, areas of Google Plus. And also I think Google's starting to realize from what we're hearing that uh, people don't like all their services bundled into a social service that they either do or do not want to use. So what Google, what Google might do more of is uh, kind of unifying the, instead instead of unifying it around the social network, just unifying it around your Google account. And, uh, you know, less emphasis on Google Plus as a result. Yes, I don't know what that means for the, the, the service, though, because I really like the service. And I don't want you to go away, Google Plus, please. Mm -hmm. The social, you're saying you really the, like the, the social network. I just like yeah. the social network. Yeah, yes. yeah. Right. It's going to be all about Google Plus as, the, as a platform, right? So, yeah. like, add Google sign into all your apps, right? That's that's Google Plus for, right. for, for Google. And that's what they're going to be telling developers. And actually, that's a great experience for developers to add in their apps because you don't have to enter another key password. And mm -hmm. so, again, there's going to be like, oh, you didn't mention Google Plus. Is it dying? It's like, yeah, we talked about it the entire conference. All right. of this is Google Plus. All of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. But, but not the social network. Which is, sure. Which I'm okay with. Yep. Uh, and finally, hopeful, I'm hopeful anyways, that we'll actually get to see in person Project mm -hmm. Tango, Project Ara, which is the Aura modular. would be so cool. And I really hope they have a booth with Ara yeah. so that we can kind of go in there and kind of put them together, you know, however it goes, have a little a little kit to play with. You have to pull you off know? a heist to get that up here. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. That's so cool. That's that's easy. Who knows? Maybe everybody gets an Ara. Would that just blow your mind? Oh, I'd be so yeah. upset. <laughs> Oh, now you're just now you're just trying to hurt me. <laughs> uh, driverless car, something else that we're probably all going to get one. Of. <laughs> just be one under a seat a, like the Jetsons. Just a row of them along, along <laughs> Fourth Street. Yeah, but you, <laughs> no, no, you, no, you unfold them like the Jetsons wall, like the car. Like they're just under your seat. Like everybody gets a free browser and a driverless car. <laughs> I just want to know if I fit in that thing. I do I fit in that thing? I'm going to guess you don't. I probably do, but yeah. not. Not comfortably. Amazingly comfortable. You remember that episode of Simpsons with the very tall yes. man in the zoo? <laughs> Do you think there's something funny at the sight of me driving around in my automobile or something like that? Yeah. Uh, yes, I've seen that. I'm sorry. Yeah. As evidenced by my horrible rendition. <laughs> and finally, Boston Dynamics robot. Hit the video, Brian. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Uh, o for two, Brian. That's right. O you know what? Two. I blame me because I didn't put the little red video thing no. there. No, I take the blame, Jason. It's fine. <laughs> Listen, the Here TD's go. got to take responsibility. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we see this guy. Pet man. Oh, yeah. That's just creepy. It is kind of creepy. Um, I just want to see a robot. I don't think it, I don't actually think that's going to happen. But I like that would it be great? I like that it's a that robot that looks like in hazmat gear. <laughs> yeah. Like it looks like it looks like post-apocalyptic robot, right? It's like yeah. Uh, yeah they change the music, and that would be super scary. They could make it a little <laughs> more friendly looking. They yeah. always have some sort of they big do. demo yeah. on the they, floor, They have robots right? roaming yeah. the... Yeah. <laughs> they've been like little nerdy robots like with a, a tablet and yeah, you can yeah. a big yeah. wheel. Yeah. But now they own Boston Dynamics, right? Yeah. So put pet, you know, put a put big dog out in the middle and scare yeah. the crap out of everybody. Yeah. Wasn't there that giant game with the rolling ball that you can control mm. with Android, right? Yep. Like yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. sort of giant display thing. Oh, Maybe this will be this I guy. I would love to see some Boston, Boston Dynamics robotics. Oh, I just totally noticed the dude behind him controlling it. <laughs> anyway, anyways, there you go. Uh, so, any final thoughts other than <laughs> I can't wait? It's exciting. Excited. Who knows? I can't wait I'm to excited. see what we don't know. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like we didn't see glass coming that year. Exactly. You know, like we didn't. We didn't see Chromecast coming. We didn't see. Well, Chromecast wasn't there last time. Oh right, right. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of the queue. I'm thinking yeah. of the queue. Oh, the queue. Yeah, we didn't see the queue. Right. Right. Chromecast was up. not introduced no, to IO last not. year. Nope. Mm. It was last fall. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so I'm more curious about what, what we don't know is coming. What, yeah. what, what is the surprise? What is the one more thing, you know, that they'll, they'll roll out? So I'm excited. I'll be watching from my office as I'm working. <laughs> Final thoughts, that's it. Ready to move on to other things? All right. All right, yeah. I.O. Uh, of course, next week we're going to be talking all about it, and we will be probably the last Android show to talk about I.O. <laughs> because it happens tomorrow, as usually big news in the Android space seems to happen the day after our show. But we will have a week to think about it, and really think of the impact yeah, of it. We'll, we'll Digest. Deep, deep analysis. Late developments. Yes. Uh, we promise it'll be good. <laughs> All right, before we move on, let's thank our sponsor, first sponsor of today's episode, and actually a new sponsor of All About Android. It is Smart Things. Now, Smart Things makes it easy to protect and control your home with your smartphone. I've actually got a bunch of, of their devices here. They have a, a number of different packages and 
and things. Well, maybe I don't have a camera for it, but uh, we'll work on that. Uh, you can adjust the lights or temperature. You can keep track of whether your kids come home from school on time. Even check to see if you remember to close the garage door. You can do it from anywhere using your iOS or Android device. You start with one of the three smart home security kits. Each kit contains one smart things hub and enough sensors, switches, and outlets to turn your home into a smart home in as little as 15 minutes. You just plug the smart things hub into your router and add sensors, switches, outlets by following the instructions from the free and easy to use smart things app. In addition to smart things own sensors, you can add hundreds of other home automation devices from a variety of manufacturers like GE, Schlag, uh, Honeywell, Eon, as well as the latest connected devices like the Nest Thermostat, Philips Hue, uh, Wemo, Sonos, and much more. Uh, SmartThings offers three home security kits, which they call Smart, Smarter, and Smartest, as you can see here. The Smart Home Security Kit is $329. Here's the hub right here as well. Uh, it includes one SmartThings hub, one SmartSense motion sensor, one SmartSense presence sensor, and three smart sense multi sensors, which are multi purpose sensors for doors, windows, and drawers that sense when things open and close, and you can measure temperature, acceleration, and vibration. The smarter home security kit is $479, and it adds an additional motion sensor, a smart power outlet, and a siren strobe alarm. Uh, this is some smart homes here. Smartest home security kit is $599. It includes all of the above plus another presence sensor power outlet and an outdoor light plug and control power outlet and each of this ki these kits offer an affordable way to secure and automate your home without any of the contracts monitoring fees or hidden charges associated with traditional home security companies and gina you have a little bit of experience with smart things is that right i do i do i just looked it up so i backed smart things on kickstarter back in man Again? it was 2012 no no september oh. 2012 so so i've got this whole kit at home and i love it um I used it to, uh, I had it hooked up to my daughter's stroller, so I could push notification when the stroller went in and out, which is kind of fun when I was, like, traveling on business. I knew where she was at. Oh, that's and awesome. this And this piece I had hooked up to my <laughs> mailbox, so, like, when the, the, the mail got delivered, I got a push notification that, like, because that, that tells you whether or not something's open or closed. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's really, really fun. I really, really enjoyed it, um, and uh, I'm, I was so excited when I saw they were a sponsor. I was like, I know these guys. They're, like, a friend of a friend. Great product. I really loved it. It was my, it was my first and only kind of smart home setup. Uh, yeah, so, so that's a magnet so you put so that you put, so you put that on like your mailbox door so when the mailbox gets open the door opens yeah you get it you get a push notification or, or whatever you so want cool. you, and they've got hookups so to IFTTT and I, that kind of thing hypothetically i could hook it up to my refrigerator yeah, yeah. and then my trainer could get a push notification <laughs> exactly. and then be like Yo, oh, dude, you what are you eating? eating yeah yeah you aren't exactly. allowed to eat ever exactly. well, i don't have a trainer <laughs> but, uh, but hypothetically <laughs> a trainer that was trapped if i had a trainer the times that you opened your refrigerator Bad trainer, <laughs> <laughs> or good. Or you could do like a, like the like the motion detector on yeah. your safe, or like if you've got like a I don't, but like a gun box or something. Mm -hmm. If you want to know that something's moved, oh, right? You don't want to know that someone's not getting Nobody messes in. with the gun box without yeah, sure. me knowing about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love smart things. Awesome. Great product. Yeah. Uh, cool stuff. Well, it's um, really cool. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah, and it's uh, well designed too. Uh, yeah. To get started creating your smart home, visit smartthings.com/twit, and you can save ten percent off the purchase of any home security kit by entering the code twit10 at checkout. You also get free shipping within the U.S. That's smartthings.com/twit, and remember to use the code twit10 at checkout. And we thank Smart Things for their support of all about Android. It's good to have you on board. All right, so what else so do cool. we have? I'm sorry, I'm just all about this. I like it when <laughs> you see... Smart Things like, Read is over, Ron. Well, no, but when you I see understand these, We talked about this last week. When you see away. these Kickstarters actually happen, yeah. and it's real, oh, and it's cool. Like, this right. says, I'll alert you if your dog or cat unexpectedly leave your home. That's great. That's genius. See how many times we lost our dog growing up? Yeah. Had this thing on, you'd find him. Or at least know that he left. So, kind of smart. <laughs> yeah, it's smart. It's a smart thing. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, speaking of awesome hardware, let's get into hardware. So it was a big, big day last week for our friends up in uh, Seattle, right? Or, you know, I was on uh, vacation. You were on vacation. Uh, but I still, for some reason, tuned into this. <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> Shocked to, to hear the coverage. You, I actually, you know, after, after a while of being on vacation, um, I, I, the 
distraction of work was kind of a nice reprieve in a strange <laughs> way. That's a, that's a sign of a good vacation. Wanna, that's a sometimes sign. you want to step away, yeah. and then you step back in, and you're like, oh, yeah, see, yeah. this is This, is, this is why I want to step away. You, you can't be <laughs> in the <laughs> news business and then just not check the news. It's a compulsion. Well, the, the, right? the, the, the challenge with what we do, particularly with shows like this, is if you step away for a week and you miss so much, coming back is really, really hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so I did pay attention to this, of course. This is Amazon's special event uh, to show off the Fire Phone, which we I feel like we knew so much about going into the event. But now we have specs, we have release date and all that. It's 4.7 inch, 1280 by 720 display. It has a 2.2 gigahertz quad core, uh, quad core Snapdragon 800 processor, very similar to what's in the Nexus 5, actually. Two gigs of RAM. Uh, 32 and 64 gig storage versions, 13 megapixel rear facing camera, 2.1 megapixel front facing camera, a 2400 milliamp hour battery. Um, and then this is where it kind of gets a little differentiated here. Front and back glass casing with rubberized sides. Uh, you happen to have the Nexus 4, which I is one of few rock phones the that retro. I know of that has the same front and back glass thing. Not with rubber sides, though. No, but yeah. you could get a bumper, I suppose. I could. Um, so there's that. Uh, it has its much-touted dynamic perspective technology, which uses four cameras on the front. Yeah, good video to show it off. Uh, to basically determine where your head and eyes are. So when you move around your phone or when you move the phone around you, it actually changes the perspective. So it's not true 3D. Yeah. But it's simulated 3D, essentially. It's uh, looking around objects based on where your head is located. So definitely sounds interesting. Firefly image recognition, and there's even a dedicated button on the side. What is Firefly image recognition? It's uh, the ability to, even on a screen off state, so you just pull the phone out of your, your pocket and you're at the store and you want to see how much this milk is on Amazon, if, if Amazon sells milk. I don't know. Uh, but I'm you basically sure you take a picture of the item and it immediately like queries and sends that photo off and... They they love Amazon loves that. Oh, yeah. I, I know many, oh, yeah. many small and business people who don't like who don't. that. Yeah. <laughs> as people walk into their stores and basically are just zapping pictures and looking it up on Amazon and buying it online and walking out of the store. So mm -hmm. yeah. Very controversial. Showrooming. Very. Yeah. Uh, operating Fire OS, which is, of course, Amazon's forked version of Android. Uh, it does have May Day customer support. So that's the, that's cool. I think, within like 10 seconds, if you have a question about anything, which I do mean anything, like they, they released some of their questions, uh, an article about it a couple of weeks ago on like what kinds of questions they get. And it's all across the board. It's not necessarily limited to customer service. So it's like, how do I beat this level of Angry Birds? It's everything. Uh, <laughs> but if that's your thing, you know, you want need someone to talk to, you got Mayday. Uh, it releases July 2014, $650 off contract or $200 for 32 gig version, $300 for 64 gig version with an exclusive uh, contract through AT&T. Uh, what else? Amazon's also throwing in a year of free Prime. So that sweetens the deal a little bit. And actually, when you consider that, that's like an extra, what, 100 and, 130 or whatever $130 yeah. back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, with a Prime service, if yeah. you consider yep. the cost of Prime normally. And then free unlimited photo storage via Amazon Cloud Drive. What do you think? I, this was the most underwhelming announcement because I felt like, because I was watching it, I was watching I was watching on The Verge. I was there, they were doing their live stream and they roll something out. I'm like, oh yeah, I knew about that. Oh yeah, I knew about that. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, right. I knew about that. Yeah. Firefly was different. I mean, I yeah. feel like yeah. I mean, that was that was unique. But then I was like, oh, that's kind of creepy. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's what it's what we what we thought it would be. There was no real big curveballs, at least for me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think you'll get a lot of dedicated Amazon users who buy it. Uh, yeah. Exclusivity on AT and T is that going to make make the world a better place for Amazon? <laughs> uh. Yeah. yeah, not going to matter. Think, yeah, I don't think, probably not going to matter to the customer base. I, you know, I thought this was a solid announcement, if not mind blowing. I mean, I, I like to see that that Amazon's competing places like where like Google isn't like Mayday isn't something that Google's ever going to do, right? Yep. I like the idea, like for Android as a platform, that Fire OS is now a legitimate. You know, like I, I I'm sure. not troubled by the fact that it's a fork, right? Like this is what Android Android's a platform. This is right. supposed to happen. So I like mm -hmm. to see that that Amazon's sort of making their layer. Maybe Samsung's going to do this as well. I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, the, the, the dynamic perspective thing, and this is where being a technologist totally gets in my way, because I'm like, they built in four cameras and all that code just for that, like, little effect? Yep. Really? Um, but whatever, that's that's me not being empathetic. I, I, I think maybe they needed to differentiate They needed to do something. Yeah, right. I agree. So, yep. 
Right. Yeah, but what's weird about that is using um, using just the gyroscopes in your phone, you can do something similar. And I realize this is similar but different. Some of the reviews of, of people who actually saw it said, yes, it's definitely different than just using the gyroscope. But I can't imagine it's that much different. So, yes, like that. See? You see, that's almost exactly mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It's like, see, it's it's like we like, have the phone right here. Yeah, it's 3D. <laughs> <laughs> um, good work, Brian. Uh, see, there you go. <laughs> See, we'll keep you. He got one back. He still yeah, got two. Back. Yeah, so you're, you're only you're only down one now, Brian. I'm keeping yeah. a scoreboard over. Oh, no, I am. I am <laughs> in my head. I know you're keeping keeping notes, and that's why we like you. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, it's like uh, as uh, let's see who's just said it. Somebody just said it's just parallax. Damn it! Says yeah. Luke in the chat room. And that's true. Yeah, it's parallax. Like I showed off a, a parallax wallpaper uh, you know, mm. app for Android months ago, and. That got old. I mean, that was cool yeah. for a couple of weeks, and then I was like, okay, I don't need this. No, but anymore. Jason, there are four cameras that do it. <laughs> no, that's the thing. I mean, but they, what's, they, what's they, interesting though for developers, like Amazon released an API, like where yeah. you can build this into your app, sure. right? So now suddenly developers are maybe perhaps perhaps in a position where they're building their app for the, with hooked into the Google APIs. They're building their app hooked into the Amazon APIs, and that, and so you're sort of like you, you're making a decision between those those that service layer, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a new thing, and that's an interesting thing, and it could lead to fragmentation. Are the Amazon App Store sales, you know, worth? I don't, I don't know. Is is? I mean, if you're a game maker, that's probably really exciting. That effect. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, you got to be sold though, if you're a game maker and you're building your game just for around that, that functionality. Just you got to be sold phone. on the fact that there's yeah. going to be some return on it, right? Yeah. There's going to be enough users of the Amazon phone to justify Absolutely. you spending that time. Right. It's that chicken developing. and egg problem, right? Like oh, developers are going to follow the users, the users are going to follow the apps, you know, whatever. So, but, so Amazon's going to make it compelling. Or if you're a developer and you do develop for this and then this ends up becoming the next big thing and then suddenly Google is developing this kind of thing into their own version of Android and you were the first person in, then you capitalize on a big opportunity and mm -hmm. you're happy that you did. I don't see that out yeah. of this though. Yeah. But yeah. Who knows? I well, know. and then there's the then there's the skeptics' uh, point of view, which there's an article up by Mike Elgin on Computer World about why you should not buy right. the Amazon Fire Phone, and I think it sums up in his conclusion on the second page, which I'm just going to read word for word, which is um, Amazon is capable of storing, analyzing, and recognizing all this data and combining it with your personal information collected from your Amazon browsing and shopping over the years. What you read, what you buy, where you live, where you watch, what you listen to, who you send gifts to, and their addresses as well. Because the Fire Phone and Amazon are capable of the most comprehensive and aggressive of personal data harvesting ever offered in a product, Amazon needs to be far more transparent and detailed about what the phone actually does, what it will do in the future, and how Amazon uses and protects its data now and in the future. Yeah. And so, and so until they do that, my strong recommendation is do not buy the Amazon Fire Phone. Yeah. It's I, the Firefly listening and the pictures right, and all right, this what's stuff. Right, what's it doing with yeah. all that information? But and, just swap Google know. in for Amazon and every single one of those sentences. Right. I mean, you know. But of <laughs> like, course, Google's the, yeah. so much more transparent about what they're doing with the data. And Am that, Amazon's <laughs> not. So that, yeah. I think that's the big difference. Right. Yeah. right, right. Right, but Google's been beaten for years about privacy, you know, around yeah. privacy issues too as well. There's no but question yeah, Google's yeah. still using that data. <laughs> right. Like, there's no, no but sure. maybe they're right. a little more transparent. We right. hopefully know how, although I don't think we totally know, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. Uh, of course, Mike Elgin, uh, you can find him on Tech News Today every morning exactly. on yeah. another show that there I produce on the yeah. Twitter network. There I know that guy. <laughs> uh, but it was a great article and very, yeah. very good points, especially about uh, kind of the privacy aspect of Amazon Fire Phone. Is the general consumer going to care much about that? No. I don't know if they're really going to I mean that. again I go back to saying that if you're if you're dialed into the Amazon ecosystem like a lot of Amazon Prime and uh, the, the millions of people the people who are buying the, the the fire you know HDX and all this sort of stuff then you probably don't think give it another thought similar to how I don't give it another thought when I get the latest Nexus phone because I'm dialed into the Google infrastructure sure. you know yep. Yep. so uh, I don't know it'll be interesting I'll, I'll be curious to see what the sales numbers look like on it so uh, I don't think that Amazon cares too much about the sales numbers of this device. I think this is their first device, and they weren't. I, I think if they made it ninety nine dollars or something, then it would have indicated they were trying to be a bigger push. But I think this is just their first device of many. So this is them establishing their you know beachhead. I don't. Mm -hmm. Do you think their next device has this uh, this parallax? Uh, yeah, no, technology? I don't know about that, but I don't think they're you know looking to make a huge. Or yeah. or do they come out with a ninety nine dollar no no parallax? Well, two hundred bucks isn't that too, too bad with the AT and T? Well, but, and, know, well, yeah. it's six fifty. Yeah. It's the price yeah. of a normal flagship yeah. without a contract. So if they were looking to make a huge. I think you're right. If if they were looking to make a huge impact with this, uh, they would have sold it. 
themselves without a carrier exclusivity to AT&T and U.S. Yeah. only, yeah. you know, and they would have done it through their site with some with, the, you know, they already have kind of the prime, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pa part to sweeten the deal. But they would have made that a little bit more intense and, yeah. you know, maybe sold it at a deep discount just to get people using it and make an impact right out of the gate. I think you're totally That's right. That's interesting. It's very interesting. Well, if you're looking for an alternative, boy, have we got one for you. Uh, in the department of, uh, I can't believe this is happening, and also the <laughs> the, the tennis game of, of rumors and, and reports and things like that, uh, Microsoft unveiled its first Android ha handset, uh, the, no the Nokia X2. So if you never thought you'd ever see a Microsoft Android handset, well, there it is. Um, so we we heard this so many we heard it's happening it's not happening like how many yeah. times did we report back and forth on this it's ridiculous it was gonna happen when yeah. Nokia was Nokia but now Nokia then is with Microsoft so it's not gonna happen but maybe it will and now but it is. now it's yeah. happening so if you want a Microsoft Android phone you can get the Nokia X2 it's got a 4.3 inch display 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon 200 uh, 1 gig of RAM uh, well 16 gig of storage uh, 5 megapixel rear facing camera dual SIMs um, which is an interesting, you know, considering Nokia. Yeah. Um, it's running the Nokia X software platform 2.0, which is a for the Nokia's own fork of Android. And uh, the default browser, it's a little browser called Opera. Yeah. So there oh, you go. Opera. There yeah, it is. Stay in the sun. Opera's still kicking around. Yeah. So, uh, And, of course, it doesn't use any of the Google API, yeah. so they yeah. have all the Nokia maps and all those things. So it's, it's a way for, an for Android users to experience what it's like to be a... Windows phone user, kind of. Right. right? What I Would like. You say? What, and that's kind of. What I like about the product right shot is that we've got a. If you look at the uh, Brian, I don't know if you can pull that up or if you already closed it. But uh, you've got the camera, and then you've got the back of the phones, and then the uh, they decide to show you the cloud drive login screen. Yeah, which is nice. It's like, oh yeah, remember this thing? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, or no, sorry, OneDrive. Yeah, that's <laughs> OneDrive. OneDrive. Yeah. So there you go. That's a good choice for the product shot. <laughs> don't don't show me the home screen or anything. <laughs> there you go. There's your home screen. There it is. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I mean this is firmly in the low to mid uh, range, and I mean mm -hmm. at dual core 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon 200, I'd I'd probably say more low. Yeah. Uh, than anything, but mm -hmm. uh, there you go, and it's also you know probably not necessarily aimed at uh you know places like the u.s as much as it is kind of yeah. uh maybe developing more developing countries yeah. or lower income areas so and of course nokia is real big in developing mm -hmm. countries like yep. they still actually yep. are a dominant player there so yep. does yep. nokia x have an app store where, where, where are users getting apps on this thing um it, it is an amazon app store app oh, store they have the actually app and they store. Um, right. right now i got an email that uh they're basically paying bounties for developers oh, wow. to, to um, port their apps. Bounties. So if you have, I think Arf. if you have five <laughs> apps you can port, they'll give you a free X2. Is, oh, that, okay. is that the bounty they're paying? Yeah, that's the bounty. Oh, so they should um, pay a little more than I that. I want like lifetime prime. Yeah. Come on. Or, or, or <laughs> I don't know, money. <laughs> well, <laughs> like I suppose you can sell like the X2. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Well then, all right. Yeah. <laughs> of course you have to convert all your Google APIs over to Nokia APIs. Um, right. Which is simple, right? That's easy. Depends. No, just, yeah, I, mean, I don't know the what the, yeah, what yeah. they supply. Do they yeah. supply cloud messaging infrastructure? Obviously, they supply maps, but you know, there's a lot of mm -hmm. things we rely on Google for. Sure. Yeah, yeah it's true. Very it's true. true. All right. And then finally, a little bit from LG. Yeah, a little bit on the future of the Nexus. Uh, if you wonder, if, if you're wondering if LG might be creating yet another Nexus phone, and possibly the last in the Nexus series before Silver comes along, Android Police asked Ken Hong, Global Communications Director of LG, for the details. To which he said. We're not really sure what the status of the Nexus program is. We've been hearing a lot of speculation about its future, but that's a Google decision, not LG's. As of today, there are no Nexus devices in our immediate pipeline. LG is rumored to be one of the launch partners when Silver finally happens, but they denied any knowledge of that either. Um, keep in mind that one year ago, <laughs> LG said it wasn't working on another stock Android device as well. So, you know, we know where that ended up. We need a, do we need a talking Ken Hong? We do need a talking Ken Hong. We need, we a, we need a, a talking Ken Hong. Because I feel like we're going to hear lots of quotes from him. <laughs> so, no LG Nexus, but then, you know, can yeah, you can trust LG, Nexus. LG he's not gonna, when yeah, they say he's no not Nexus? Say they yeah. can't stay away. Yeah. And Google loves LG far too much. Yeah. Um, so, I wouldn't be surprised still, even though. All right, let's take another break and thank another sponsor of today's episode. That would be Prosper. In 72 hours, you could have $35,000 to cover your needs. What would you do? Would you pay off high rate credit cards? 
Did you start a business, do that home improvement project that you've been uh, putting off? <laughs> I know I've been putting off a lot of them. Uh, I need to find time Whew, and money. Uh, fill out an easy online application, provide a few details, and see a rate online almost instantly. Prosper offers low fixed rates, unsecured personal loans. There's no collateral required. Uh, it has multi-year terms available. And yeah, it's perfect uh, if you're, you know, like me, the new new homeowner, and I have more projects than I can even count. Uh, and somehow you have to dig up the money for this, and eventually you just can't stand to look at that horrible fence in your backyard or the the floor in your kitchen. I feel like I can, this is personal, Jason. It's, it's it really is personal. <laughs> <laughs> at a certain point, I'm gonna have to take care of that fence, man. Because boy. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, you need the money to do it. This is the, this is the way to kind of uh, tackle that project. Prosper is Silicon Valley's answer to personal loans. With Prosper's innovative peer-to-peer -peer lending process, there are no outrageous fees, no raising interest rates, and you'll never set foot in a bank. Prosper has more than 2 million members and over a billion dollars in funded loans. And it's peer-to-peer -peer lending. So, you know, I've talked about it uh, in the past, but you basically take what you know about peer-to-peer -peer services online and apply that to... Uh, apply that to money, you know, uh, distributed content, delivery, file sharing, streaming media, just take that and put, you know, swap it out with the financial world. And it's essentially peers lending money to you uh, via Prosper, essentially. So you just go to prosper.com slash twit to check your rate instantly without affecting your credit score. And for a limited time, Prosper is offering twit viewers a $50 visa prepaid card when you get a loan. Just go to prosper.com slash twit it's a special site just for our viewers. Uh, up to $35,000 in just three days and a $50 Visa prepaid card. Go to prosper.com slash twit. And we thank Prosper for their continued support of All About Android and the Twit Network. Thank you. All right. And we've got a few apps. <laughs> now I'm just trying to throw you off. I'm sorry. Dramatic pause. Okay. <laughs> I'm not editing that out either. Good. I'm keeping, I'm keeping that in. So is that is that now uh, all about Android 3, Brian 1? Did we get that? Because he was asleep. So. Yes. Yeah, okay. Jim B in the chat says four? triple well, A 3, yep. Brian all right. 1. The you judges have ruled. I was working on this. <laughs> That's why I couldn't. Is that LG's, is that LG's Ken Han? It is. So. Uh, I just I got brought him up on Skype. But I just, right. I can't all right, Ken, uh, it's... It's good to have you on here. What do you have to say? Uh, <laughs> there will be no LG. We're not really phone. sure what the status of the Nexus program is. We've been hearing a lot of speculation about its future, but that's a Google decision, not LG's. Thank you, Ken. So I, says my good friend Jackie Chan. <laughs> I really appreciate the uh, the you know both of you coming on the show today. Uh, and Brian, you just uh, earned yourself a point. That's a point. Whew. That's a point. Yeah, that is the next all about Android three. Brian two. Woohoo! Um, that's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's good. Um, I might even give him a point and a half for that, to be honest with you. But, <laughs> but he blew the thing. So, yes. yeah. You see, the thing is, you got to do that and keep the show moving. That's the, that's what Brian doesn't know. It's a delicate um, balance. Talk about keeping the show moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good segue, at least. I believe that was on everybody's mind. <laughs> talk about good segues. Every now and then. <laughs> I'll give him a point for that, too. There we go. <laughs> I, I warned everybody on Google Plus that tonight's show would be firmly, like, off the rails. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to score that in Brian's favor. That's a 3-3. Three, three. So there you go. Um, right. Every now and then, Jason gives a, gives us a gift. He does. He, Jason puts together the rundown. He finds these great articles, and he finds an article like this, and he gave it to me to I'll talk about. I'll give it to you. Where General Motors uh, uh, Research Division in China have come up with an app called DD Plate that allows you to scan a license plate and then send a text message to the owner of the license plate of the car. So think about that. You can scan the <laughs> license plate and it will send a text message to the owner of the car. They did not divulge how the license plates are linked to a phone number. What if someone else is driving? All these wonderful uh, the security issues and Whether all that sort of thing. Texting that, that go while driving. Well, here are some of the use cases <laughs> that um, that uh, John Du from GM's China Research and Development. Mm. He's GM's China Research and Development director. Here's some use cases he gave. This is my favorite. This is great. Here's a great example. A male driver asks a female driver out on a date. 
She accepts. All via not text. Awkward. Yeah, not awkward. Not only creepy, Could, but heterosexist. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, heteronormative. Yeah, there it is. And then the other use case he provides is that a driver's car is blocked in a parking lot, so she texts the owner of the offending car asking him to move. I suppose that one, but still, no. This, this is, just has abuse written all over it. Such abuse. Imagine you just scan the license plate and you can send them a text instantly, like talk yeah. about privacy and all that yeah. sort of and then think about the solicitations, like like the yeah. not the not those kind of solicitations. I'm talking about the Chinese menus and things like that, but imagine the other solicitations that could occur too. I'm sure there would be plenty yeah. of all types of, of yeah. solicitations. So there you go. So GM China building uh, a better future. Yeah. Chi Chinese market. So, and, and GM did say that though it's a prototype app at the moment, they plan to add it into its infotainment system in sidecars. <laughs> so, you, you know, it, it could become a thing. That's some infotainment, all right. Infotainment, yeah. indeed. Uh, there we go. All right. I like that he added that a scenario is a, a male driver. The can very ask first a, one is a like. A male driver can ask a female driver. And she accepts. Like, like, why did he we, add that she accepts? Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, we needed an end to that story? Because like, clearly, clearly like, she's so amazed by his use of this like, app. I can't she believe he stopped I'm, I'm this tech, Thank you. I'm this tech reporter. I'm like, yeah, you know, he gave this whole use case for the app, and he says a guy could ask a girl out, but he didn't tell me what happened. <laughs> oh, she accepted. Okay. Whew. That's a great app. Let's sign me up. Like, why do we need an end to that it's a, story? That's a terrible use case. That's a horrible <laughs> use case. The parking one was way better. <laughs> Way better. Letting someone know that they left their lights on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Letting yeah. someone know that they're yeah the meter yeah. ran out. You know they, they're blocking your space. But imagine Whatever. you're driving 65 miles an hour on the freeway <laughs> and then your phone lights up and it's like, hey, I'm in the blue Chevy behind you. <laughs> Want to go out? Like nice what? bumper. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like how does that like? I dig your hybrid. Like what are these pickup lines? <laughs> and then she accepts. How does she accept? She's driving. You can't text while driving. Don't we have laws? Well, you both pull over. Oh, and take right. from your car and pulled over on the side of the road. Oh, oh boy. It's a thing. This is not involve a camera, like in your in, in the they front grill, they so didn't that you could just how. shoot the person in front of you yeah. and text them. Anyway. It just it's fraught with disaster. I love it. I love it. Pretty right. awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well then, I need a nap now. <sighs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's come down from that one. Yeah. Uh, and First talk about Hong gaming developers. That, yeah. <laughs> it's an obvious segue. Gaming developers. Gaming developers. We're going to hear a lot about this tomorrow. Uh, but, so it could have been the preview preview block. But anyway, analytics firm App Annie, which I love and use for my own app, uh, published a report that says that play apps, the downloads and revenue, have all seen phenomenal, quote unquote, growth this past year with app revenue more than doubled, up 2.4 times in one year. Um, Q1 2014, games represented almost 90% of play app revenue. That's, That's crazy. a lot. It is 90%. crazy. Wow. It's crazy. Freemium or free to play had a huge impact, accounting for nearly 98% of total Play Store revenue in May 2014. And there are now more apps available in the Play Store, 1.5 million, than Apple's App Store, 1.2 million. This is, I mean, this is what Google opens with. When they open the Android segment, right, they're gonna, they're just gonna wow us with numbers and like charts with giant lines and a little robot crawling up them, right? Like you can, you can, mm -hmm. you can see this. This is what, mm -hmm. this is what they do. And so we're gonna hear a lot more about these numbers. Mm -hmm. This is what App Annie's reports are saying. I'm sure that Google's gonna have some big numbers to blow us away with. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, how many IOs ago was it that they did this big gaming push? I was Thust IO, I think. Yeah, they it worked. To play it yep. worked. <laughs> Google Play games worked, yeah. right? So if Google Play Fitness or Google right. Fitness does for f health apps what, what Play Games did for games. Yeah, I agree. Or, be that's good, the same yeah. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Fit yeah. is the same sort of play as pl games. And uh, it's never been as good a time as it is right now for games on the Android platform. Yeah. Yep. They're coming so fast and so furious. For obvious reasons. Because <laughs> it's incredibly yeah. profitable, especially yeah. if you're doing freemium uh, style game. As much as people want to knock the uh, free with in app purchase model, mm -hmm. people it works. pay it. It totally works. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. To the yeah. to the point where like I was on the Google Play Store researching my, the app for the arena later on, and I was going through the new releases. It is an overwhelming large number of app of games compared to apps oh yeah like yeah. it is just it and, really and, is. They, and they're all over to the point where i kind of think google needs to clean up the store a little to say like this is a game this is an app like because games are so overwhelming and there seems like and they mm. all look great and they all look you know so it really yeah. is you know it's it's developing that's for sure yep yeah. uh and finally it's fun to uh <laughs> to always be you know, pointing fingers at Facebook for their app because for years their app really, really sucked. Um, they have a history of, of just having a, a poorly 
operating app. It's, it was slow. slow it was, native, web. Yeah, it's, nah, it's, it's been all over the place. Yeah. Uh, I've definitely noticed an improvement. And some people that are watching this are like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't use Facebook anymore. But I have to use it because, you know, my family and, and friends are on there. And uh, thankfully, if I have to use it, the app has gone a little better. I thought this was an interesting story. Um, Africa, we have to thank for it, apparently. Um, in this case, Facebook actually sent a team of their engineers and product managers to Africa to purchase low-end devices there and use its infrastructure with their app to see what you know, cool. see what others experience cuz you know as as uh, as developers i imagine you know you try and test on all different types of of devices but I imagine more often than not, you're targeting the high-end devices because you imagine, well, they're the people that have the money and so, you know, for a number of reasons. Well, um, you have the high-end device and the big that? pipe. You have right. the high-end device and, and the big pipe, right? You, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a controlled environment. And exactly. All that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it turns out the app repeatedly crashed on these devices, had incredibly slow load times, consumed, in some cases, a month's data allotment within 40 minutes wow. based on how it was designed. <laughs> So they overhauled it uh, based on the research that they did while in Africa. And uh, out of that experience, you know, now images are loaded in sizes that match the screen size and not in full size as they were before. Uh, you can you have the option to download the full size if you want. Features are loaded in a staggered way to prevent a lag at boot up. So instead of loading the app and it loads all the features and it takes forever to load up and it's kind of slow and laggy until it all buffers in or whatever, it kind of loads as a, loads as a per need basis. Uh, and they reduced the app size by 65 percent so wow. i just thought it was kind of an interest you know give give facebook props where where it's due they obviously uh had a pretty darn smart approach now not every developer has the has the ability to send their team or send themselves to africa and do right. this um but it's a just kind of a good i think gut check uh, about yeah. the fact that, you know, we aren't, you know, here in the United States at least and, yep. you know, on our Nexus 5s or whatever, we aren't the only ones using these apps. And there are a lot of other people that have a hard time uh, using the apps because of the way they're designed uh, like that. So, yeah, I mean, cool. and this is the way you motivate developers, right? Like developers scratch their own itch, right? So yeah, like yeah, if, sure, yeah. if their life is miserable, they're going to fix that bug. <laughs> I yeah. always tend to fix the bug that annoys me the most first, right? Because I'm uh, just highly motivated. So I think sending the team to Africa is a really good way. And it's, it's a much different than your manager saying, hey, the app should probably work better on a, you know, a, a smaller pipe and a lower energy. Right, right, right. <laughs> it only would have been better if they didn't let them come back from Africa and was fixed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, uh, that would really be the only thing that would have made this story it's any true. better. So, yeah. You can't They're come back. They're still there. It's yeah, not yeah, good yeah, enough. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's uh, thank one last sponsor on today's episode. We want to thank uh, Landtronics and their X-Print server. Whether you're at home or the office, printing from an Android device can be a challenge, to say the least. Printing from your Chromebook or even a Kindle Fire, uh, it's not always that easy. It's kind of difficult. If your printer isn't already cloud print enabled, you're out of luck. Uh, I know I've talked about it plenty of times. My printer at home is a piece of junk. It's old, and I need to uh, I need to get a new one. But until then, uh, I need something like the Lantronics X Print server to bring cloud print a capability to my dumb printer. Essentially, X Print server is uh, this is the cloud print edition. And it's an easy setup here. Ron, I'll go ahead and hand this over to oh, you thanks, so you sir. can kind of you show, it off. show it off. <laughs> it's an easy to set up, easy to use solution for Google Cloud Print uh, enabled okay. devices, allowing wireless and mobile printing from Chromebook computers, Android phones, and tablets. Uh, even the Kindle Fire it works with. And it works with the printer you already own, whether it's wired or wireless, USB or network. First and only printer server officially certified by Google for Cloud Print and Android printing. And you can uh, print to your existing printers with no need to buy a new one. Even though I really want to buy a new one, I don't have to with, with this. Um, it's compatible with more than 4,000 top brand printers. It's uh, easy to use, automatic discovery and setup of printers. You just open it up, plug it in, and print. And uh, it even has a nice little light-up X on the logo that lets you know that it's on. And it's kind of pretty. Uh, it has advanced configuration available via its web interface. One X print server supports multiple printers and virtually unlimited Android devices. It allows your USB printers to be shared with all users over a network. It's great for your home, great for your office, and it even works with large multifunction printers. Cloud Print Edition is $149.95. It supports up to 10 network printers 
and eight USB printers simultaneously. So visit xprintserver.com slash twit for more information and to buy. And we've got a special offer for you. If you use the code twit, you can receive free shipping on your order. Remember, visit xprintserver.com slash twit and at checkout, enter the code twit. And we thank Landtronics for their support of All About Android. All right, it is that time. It's time to step into the arena. Hey, you got that one. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs> the point where we're celebrating mediocrity. <laughs> this is what we've come to, it's Brian. It's true. I like I'll, your, uh, I'll your, reward, arena, what's your arena voice. Whenever you go into the, the arena, arena, you get, yeah, yeah, you get deep. Yeah, it gets serious. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, thank you. No, I, no, I no. work on that yeah. far too often. I didn't do that last week. Brian, I will reward you with Laffy Taffy if you, if you win. The next version of uh, Android? <laughs> <laughs> no, just oh. this banana-flavored Laffy Taffy. Oh, uh, you can hang on to that. That's all I got. Uh, last week, I, I was not here, but let's see. It was episode 166, and we had Trigger, Ready Contact List, and Online Privacy Shield. Who who belonged to what? Um, I, I, was, I was Online Privacy Shield. I was Ready Contact List Beta. Okay, and Trigger you was won. Kevin Purdy. <laughs> yep. Results are in. It's ready contact list beta, 41%. Pretty cool. Boom. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. It was a cool nice app. It was, it was basically a dialer and contacts replacement app. Mm -hmm. uh, very pretty, very nice. The developers got in touch and thanked me for showing oh. it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was it's nice. Always it was always nice of them. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, no, I was I was worried that the beta, because it's part of the... Yeah, you never the, know. Well, no, but the thing is it's, you had to opt into their... Community on Google Plus, and then it's hidden in the Google Play Store unless yes. you're part of the beta group and mm -hmm. all that stuff. But it seems to be pretty good. So, and online privacy shield. As the week went on, I I, I was like using. It. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Although it just makes you more and more creeped out about. Yeah, it does. So. <laughs> oh, it's I'm, like, I'm gonna go there this week as well too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right, there as right. well. So yeah, there you go. Online privacy shield, of course, got 31 percent of the vote. Trigger with 29 percent. Yeah, we had a little bit. Trigger was our first kind of uh, uh, the chat room got a little ornery on us because uh, Trigger was a previously named app that was in the arena pre earlier. Oh, and we didn't catch it because they changed the name of the app. But we decided, uh, it, all of us together with the chat room agreed that we were gonna because Kevin was a guest and we'll let, it was we'll a new it name. We'll let it slide. But now we got to worry about them changing the names of the apps. Yeah, that's uh, so, too yeah. much to track. Yeah, too, much too much to track. track. Yeah. Okay, so who goes first? Not uh, me, because I won. Okay, well, I'll, I was out, so I'll go yeah, first. Go mine's, first. Mine's not going to take very long anyway. So um, I've been meaning to root my Nexus 5 uh, for a while now, because particularly because the Android App Arena show, I want to, you know, I want to have sit times where I focus on root apps and show them off. Uh, but I didn't want to root my device and, you know, have to start over from scratch and all that kind of stuff. And I also kind of just didn't want to go through the process of, you know, even though it's the easiest thing in the world, but ADB, you know, go go in there and plug it into a PC and, and do that whole thing. I really just wanted to be lazy this time. GeoHot, do you guys know GeoHot? George mm -hmm. Hotz, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a kind of a famed hacker. Rooter. He was the first mm -hmm. person to carry or unlock the iPhone back in the day, mm -hmm. whatever the day is. Uh, he was the person oh, that I hacked. remember that guy, yeah. He, he hacked the yeah, unhackable PlayStation yeah. 3. Yeah. He worked at Facebook for a very short time minute and then didn't and we have no idea why uh, yeah, anyways there's that uh, he's now the first person to root the unrootable AT&T and Verizon Galaxy S5 and eventually the Note 3 uh, with this app now you're not going to find this in the Play Store and I'll do my t my standard disclaimer here you're rooting your device if you're using this and so you're probably breaking your warranty uh, by definition, you're making your phone less secure because you're checking the unknown sources uh, box and allowing yourself to install an APK that Google will warn you is, you know, not something that they encourage because it's basically rooting your device. The, the reason I liked this, though, is because, A, Geo, GeoHot, I mean, in, in the world of kind of people that you can trust more or less, GeoHot has a, a history, has a background, so... You know, this is always kind of a judgment case that you make, right? Do I trust this person's um, ab ability to make my phone incredibly insecure? Uh, with GeoHop, personally, I do, but you have to make that decision on your own. Uh, but it's basically an app that I will have a link in the show notes at twit.tv slash AAA that you can literally run on any device that has 
a, un, an unpatched Linux kernel with a build date earlier than June 3rd, 2014. So it was created to get around the unrootable AT&T, Verizon, uh, Galaxy S5, and Note 3 um, kind of th difficulty, but it actually works on many other devices. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I didn't add the shortcut, so now i got to go searching for it. Here, here's, here's all my apps on my <laughs> phone. Oh, hey, Netflix has a new icon. I didn't know that. that. Hey. Yeah, they have a new logo. Really. We all rush to our phone. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Okay, so it's called, it's called Towel Root. I realized I didn't say that. There we go. Towel Root by GeoHot. Um, literally, I downloaded this. Uh, I had my unknown sources checked. I opened the app. I did click Make It Rain, that button right there. It took 0.5 seconds, I'd say, and I was rooted. It was the easiest thing in the world. It didn't wipe wow. any of my, my information. It didn't do anything. That was it. I verified this by installing Super, uh, super User and, and running it, and everything was good there. Um, I installed Titanium Backup, and now I can back up my entire device. It was just nice. the reason I like the app is because it was the easiest damn rooting uh, situation I've ever encountered on my phone, and uh, I, I like easy. So. Wow. That is it. Uh, there wasn't even reboot required. I literally yeah, it says, it says no more reboot required. Hit it, and it was like you're rooted, and I didn't believe it. I was like, oh, I'm still gonna like run one of these root apps, and it's gonna it's tell like me that I'm not. Out, and yeah. uh, it was. Uh, so there you go. Um, it's confirmed to work with the GS5 on AT&T, the GS5 on Verizon, the GS4 Active, the Nexus 5, AT&T Verizon Note 3, and a number of other phones. And the thing to remember about this is, uh, A, you know, do it at your own risk. But B, um, if you do a search for the XDA uh, entry for this, and I'm sorry, I'm not looking at it right now, and I don't have it in the doc. Maybe I'll add it later. Um, but there's a whole bunch of comments uh, from people who have tried it on different configurations, different devices that it's working on. And it all ties into your Linux kernel. As long as it's build date earlier than June 3rd, 2014, there's a chance that it might work for your device, and it's pretty darn easy. So, uh, like Bleak in the chat room saying it doesn't work on the HTC One M7, and I have... If I remember correctly, HTC might be one of the manufacturers that it doesn't work for. So it definitely doesn't work for some. But uh, there you go. So it's called Towel Root by GeoHot. You're not going to find it on the Play Store. You're going to find it through the site TowelRoot.com. And uh, it's just super simple. Now I'm rooted. So I'm going to run root apps again after nice. months of not doing so. It's awesome. T that's tempting. Tempting me. I'm there scared. I'm still scared. Rooting scares me. I want to stay stock. I don't know. I don't okay. want to, yeah, yeah. But that's really easy. Yeah. And that opens a whole bunch of. You're yeah. in the perfect position to do it. Do it though, right? Because your yeah. new phone's on it on its way. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe you don't do it until the new phone is. Yeah, in, that's in a good your idea. Pause. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't do it the night before I.O. I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's a you smart never, idea. Yeah. You never know what good decision. Oh, I was dying phone, when that bro. when my Nexus Five died. It was like it was uh, it was a night I had to stay late at work. At, so I was at work until like nine o'clock. And um, it died like at like three o'clock or four o'clock, and I, I like an hour or two after it died, I was getting IM. Somebody's like, "Why aren't you answering your texts?" And I'm like, "I can't." Like just having like five <laughs> hours with no phone, mm -hmm. and then it took me. I factory reset this, and I had to download system updates like Aww. like three or four in a row. It was oh, it was awful. I was up to like midnight doing it. It was horrible. And Bleak in the chat room is saying root is stock. And that's true. This is true. But, yeah. but it, yeah. dep you know it depends what on what you you're what talking about. Yeah, stock. Yeah, like when you're yeah. saying stock, you're saying I want. An untainted device. That's what I mean. I yes. want you know a device yeah. as it is, pulling it out of the box, and yeah. this is definitely right. not that. This yeah. opens up some insecurities. And 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 just for the record, uh, if you run it and it doesn't work, it's not going to like mess up your phone. Right. Uh, it it just won't work. You'll you'll run a root verifier app or something something that should be root, and it just won't work. It'll say you're unrooted. So uh, there isn't a whole lot to to lose, but yeah. use at your own risk. Uh, so who is next? Gina, I suppose it would be you. Yes, I should be yeah. next, yes. Yeah. I, was, I was the big big loser last week. <laughs> Let's do you <laughs> Let's do me so this second, week. Or so, right. Well, you know, relative to you, Ron. Yes. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> Version L. Eclipsed by you, Ron. <laughs> Let's be honest. I have my moments. <laughs> well, so my pick this week is called, it's an alarm clock. It's called Lifetime Alarm Clock. Uh, lifetime is two words. And I picked Lifetime Alarm Clock because I am not a morning person and the, the stock alarm just wasn't due for me. And we featured a few different alarm clocks here in the arena, um, including Timely, which is which was a favorite mm -hmm. for sure. And now a Google property. Uh, yes, and now a Google property. But 
development has basically halted, right, yeah. on that. Uh, so I decided to try out Lifetime Alarm Clock, especially this morning, because I had to wake up at 4.30 <laughs> to catch my uh, flight from New York to get here. Um, and Lifetime Alarm Clock, I, I've been using it for a week. It has more features than I've even been able to try in, in a week. Uh, but it's got a few really great features. Now, I'm one of those people, like, who can hit the snooze button every oh, eight minutes for an hour. Dangerous. And it drives my other half nuts. Dangerous. Okay. So what I really like about Lifetime Alarm Clock you set an alarm and you get a choice. You can choose, you know, wake me up gently, give me something hard and fast and just blast me out of bed or give me just a regular alarm clock. Um, that's pretty nice. You can set a, um, a limit on how many times you can snooze, like only let me snooze for 20 minutes. It, the, the gentle one, which is the one I use because I need gentle gentleness in the morning. Peaceful kind of wake. Peaceful wake. Peaceful okay. wake. Yes, thank you. Starts just really soft and kind of like the, you know, the volume softly goes up, which is really, really nice. You can set a pre-alarm where it will just sound this like really soft tone a couple minutes before your alarm is supposed to go off. Also, just sort of alert your brain. It's time to wake up. Um, and the interface is really cool. As you can see up on the screen yeah. there, the interface for setting the alarm is this really kind of nice circular um screen to set set the times um which is you know i don't know it's really not standard android design but it's but it's really nice um you can set the clock to be in night mode or day mode um and there's a there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do um there's a flashlight <gasps> here's, here's there's gentle alarm f yes that's gentle alarm that's what i wake up to in the morning it's, it's just it's like too a subtle i would never sun. wake up to that no no okay, but it's a second once it gets closer to the black dot i think yeah yes uh not channeling. Audio is not working. Oh, the, the audio is not channeling, but it it, it eventually comes I hear it on. Now. You oh, do? Yeah. oh, yeah, I've got to go through the mic. That's weird. But. That big disable swipe is when you're like sort of fumbling in the morning yeah. and you're not quite awake. Uh, you can turn it off. Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> exactly. Ooh. Exactly. Ah. Or you could just tap the whole big yellow button to snooze. That snooze, um, I see. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good alarm clock. I've, nice. I, I like it a lot. It works on flashlight. a lot of different... Yeah, there's a flashlight. There's... there's why, no, because why not? Because yeah. why not, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that you can you can set your own alarm tones for MP3 files. I found the I found the default ones cool. completely fine. Um, you can do things like if you need to wake up early to put clothes in the dryer, you can press ring next alarm early and adjust the next alarm. And after that, they're back to normal because you can schedule your alarms. Ooh, I mean, early. like things that you never really thought you'd ever want to do with your alarm clock. Um, personally, I was just really into the sort of the gentle wake and the pre-tone, uh, which is really nice. This morning, I was like, I don't want to wake up anybody else in the house. I'm just, I got to just jump out of bed and it, and it totally worked for me. I so. like that there's an option to take the icon out of the status bar. Yes. Because some alarm clocks like this. Yeah. Because it, especially if it's an alarm that's every day for you, yep. and you just always have an alarm clock up in the status bar. And it's yep. like, no, I don't need that up there. I know I that it's I think that that's required by Android, actually. Is it really? That, you, that have it, to have, you have to have, have an option to take it in off. In the notification bar. Oh, interesting. That, that it has to be there. It has to be there. I've seen oh. a lot of other developers, um, they get complaints. You know, oh, uh, the same complaint you have, why do you put this in my action bar? Oh, I'm, for, uh, for, notification. for things that are going to fire later for, yes, alarm, like for specifically alarms? Yes, like persistent, oh, for persistent uh, apps that are running. Interesting. I'm interesting. pretty sure. I, I, oh, the persistent I, notification. I see what you're saying. Yes, because that's exactly what it is. Um, it shows up on the left side. I think what I was thinking is, you know the oh the, when you have an uh, an alarm set and it shows up right there. Oh uh, yeah, I guess that is a little different. But but you're right. If an app is in an always running state, this notification has to be there. So I wonder. Right. But, right. Yeah. And maybe they're just not playing by the rules. Yeah, yeah it, it's possible. I, I, took, I took it out. I don't like to have, I mean, right. you know, I don't yeah, want to be reminded I, of the fact that I need to wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want that yes. out. <laughs> yes, it's unpleasant enough. Yeah, Let's yes, not, exactly. you know, dwell on it. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, also great for naps, which I'm a big fan of as well. <laughs> so that's lifetime alarm I like alarm naps. Clock. I don't remember what those are like anymore, <laughs> though. So I like the wake challenges to prove you're awake. Oh, that, yes, yeah, the wake challenge. That's oh, a great nice. thing. Like, I was looking at that because that, that was... It, like, because in college, I used to put my alarm clock across the room. And yeah. so I get up and I hit snooze. By the time I got to bed, I was awake. So, right. like, if you can give me something to do where I'm actually active and, like, so mm -hmm. po solving a puzzle is, is, is yeah. a good way to do it where you're like, well, and then you're up. And so, yeah. So yeah. waking up is the worst. Waking up is hard. It's hard. This it's app, hard to this do. App is, uh, what is, is the nice. fast and hard? Isn't that a time? song? Like, waking oh, up is hard to kidding? do. I, don't, I haven't even tried with the yeah. fast and hard. Oh, I, waking up is hard <laughs> to do. What does the fast and hard alarm clock sound like? 
<laughs> it's, a mode, it's a mode, fast and hard. <laughs> yes. I that was scary to me. I don't yeah. need like I don't need I don't need machine wow, guns yeah. in the Metallica morning or, or like construction yeah. or I mean, yeah. Ch- imagine? challenges and blaring noises. Challenges, <laughs> right? Like blaring noises, yeah. right there. Yeah. That, that's enough yeah. for me to be like I don't <laughs> know if I need on. this first thing <laughs> yeah, in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Like the basic training air raid horn, air raid yeah, siren. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> My town has a has a there's a, literally a the town I'm from on Long Island has a loud air raid siren kind of thing for three things. When it's noon. Okay. When there's a fire. Okay. And when schools cancel because of snow. Oh, and gro- that's and, a good one. And like growing up, like it was like literally, it was like you'd. Uh, not like that. Yeah, that's no. like Star Trek. See, that's it is Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> but it would, be, it would be so weird. It'd be like, it would start snowing. It would be like, is school canceled? My dad would be like, yeah, wait till seven to hear if the alarm blow. And like, and then you'd hear this, it's like, yeah, oh, we don't go to school. I'm like, how does that work? That, that would never work now. So, yeah. So, yeah. So. <laughs> So it's funny. Uh, so when it obnoxious. goes off, I'll let you know what. Okay, I, the, we'll, uh, we'll know. We'll hear it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Moving on. Cool. So lifetime alarm clock, and that is free. Free. Awesome. I like the built-in like ex bonus flashlight. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Does. Why not? Hay. Why not? With the hay. All right. Excellent. All right. So, Michael, what do you have? You have, speaking of games. Okay. Game, so right? I have a game, um, and it's kind of a really easy, quick, uh, like quick hand jamming game. So uh, basically this reminds me of the old school game Galaga. Uh, The name of the app is called, um, uh, what is it called? Abyss Attack. It's by um, Chilingo, which is a really good developer. That is fast and hard. That's actually. That's pretty... (laughs) Suddenly I hate the app. (laughs) (laughs) Just make it stop. Make the bad music stop. Oh, man, I hit snooze. That means it's going to come on again. Oh, and then... Wake challenge. challenge. Wake challenge. Oh, yeah, there you go. Cool. Right. Sorry, I'm awake and I can't oh, okay. so, Sorry about that. No, like no worries. If it wasn't a little off the rail, I'd kind of feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, you know, we have expectations. Yes. We do. Um, okay, so um, Abyss Attack, it's basically um, kind of a shooter game, not a first-person shooter, but um, you'll see. Um, uh, it reminds me a lot of Galaga. Basically, it's like a shooter game where you, um, you are a uh, submarine and you're going through these different environments with all sorts of different power-ups and, um, you know, challenges. So um, th- what I really like about it is um, it is free to play with um, in-app purchases, but, um, you know, the ads are between levels and stuff. The ads are not very um, in your face. And uh, also, you really don't need to pay if you don't want. Like, I, um, when I first bought the app, I, I bought, I think, one small package, you know, four ninety nine, double my points or whatever. But I've never paid since that. Um, and it's just a really great game, super easy to um, pick up and play for five minutes. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is um, the soundtrack's fine, but I generally like listen to podcasts or something. So it's a great kind of like mind this game to play when you're, you know, you don't want to be involved in like a really serious like um, strategy game or something. Mm-hmm. It's just like a quick, um, quick game. So uh, I'll do a quick demo, although. Are you getting the video, Brian? I'm not. I'm not uh, seeing anything. It may be my device, actually. Oh. We yeah. couldn't, we, it wouldn't work last week, by the way. I don't know how you get yours to work. Uh, I don't even it's know. MHL. Well, I mean, you saw the video. Um, the, so the cool thing is there's lots of different um, power-ups. You can um, you get two power-ups you get to use. You can see on the right-hand side there's that little red button. Um, so there's, like, electric power-ups, and this is the bomb power-ups. Um, in addition to the different power-ups you can use, there's a, a bunch of different bosses, so that keeps things interesting. And then the last kind of interesting thing is you pick up um, little jewels to, you know, get points and buy stuff. There's also these things called relics, which are a different thing you pick up, and those allow you to have a different type of power-up. Um, for instance, the one that I use puts a little burst out every two seconds to um, uh, push people away. Um but anyway, there's like uh, dozens and dozens of these different um, relic power-ups that allow you to um, change the dynamics of your um, your uh, player to have certain characteristics. So it's like a really quick, easy game to pick up and play, and then there's lots of different levels and challenges that keep things interesting. So it's more than just kind of like a mindless jammer. You know, there's lots of different nuances and... Um, and it's really fun. So it's got a cool little steampunk angle to it. It does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and really kind that, of a yeah. classic, old school shooter that's kind of been yeah. updated with some new yeah. kind of 
fun little, little Jules Verne action going on and yeah yep. so it's one that I played a while you know when I was looking for games I'm thinking of you know uh, looking for cool games or whatever and it's one that I play all the time so it's yeah, kind of grabs nice. me personally smooth graphics right. to it pretty easy to, yeah pretty easy Invest. to understand and pick up and just go right. right away Gina just jumps on board immediately I'm, I'm, she's I'm, installing I'm not, it not literally a, right a, now not a big gamer but I'm, yeah. I'm sold she's on board I, you know it's funny I've spent so long like not like and I still don't have a whole lot of time to play games but there's so many good games on Android right now that it's hard for me to like not install them and play them and especially now with Android App Arena like it's part of my job so maybe that's how I'm finding time to play games yeah. but yeah it's like if you want to understand the ecosystem now this yeah. is this is just such a big part of that but there's just right? so many great it's, games it's on Android, Android App Arena not Android Game Arena that's a different show come on Ron <laughs> hey Ron don't distract me right now I'm uh, you're, dying you're playing Dang it. Uh, Save me. Uh, Save uh, me. Oh, so oh. You, you get billed when you try to restart like the, it's all the... Oh, uh, you can use yeah. extra uh, yeah. gems. You do awesome gems to stay, and, yeah. to keep yeah. stay alive or stuff. Yeah. Um, ah. But I really yeah. haven't spent a lot of... Oh, that's um, clever. You get a thousand for logging in Facebook with your Facebook account? Yeah. That, that's, oh, that's, that's how that. they get yep. you. That's how yeah. Yep. Yep. Like, go ahead. Share some more with us. Yeah. Um, Hey, you get some coins to boot, so. Uh, cool. So this is Abyss Attack. I'm happy we at least got it running. <laughs> so yeah, people no, can that's see cool. It, yep. Aside from the demo. Uh, but there you go. It's Abyss Attack. It is free with some in-app purchases, if that's your thing. But it uh, doesn't sound like they're necessary. So uh, that's good as well. Cool. Uh, cool stuff. All right. I'm going to stop playing. Otherwise, it's going <laughs> to... <laughs> That's the music like from that. the game. Okay. <laughs> All right, Ron. All right. Up next. Well, if you're like me and Jason and Gina and Michael and everybody else here, you probably use your phone a lot. Uh, you've probably at some point had someone go, God, put your phone down. Ah! You know, God, that was <laughs> fast and hard. <laughs> that scared me. That actually scared me this it time. Did. Uh, you, I jumped. You jumped. Disable. That was great. Ah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It just keeps going. Seriously, stop. I think I would jump out the My window. My hand is totally trolling point. you. It will not let me stop it without solving the. Can you seriously not stop it without solving the challenge? Here, I'm, I'm never... plugging in the headphone, and don't pull it up. <laughs> no. It's That's figured, funny. With the headphone in, it, it's still making noise. Too smart. I'm going to have to, like, take my phone away from the set. I'll be back. Do you want to start? <laughs> What's going on? Can we complete the challenge? Is, is the challenge that challenging? Is, is it People, challenging? Jason just left. This has never happened before. This is unprecedented. This is unprecedented. Google I.O. has gotten the best of them. It's under a pillow. <laughs> I can't okay, even. Sorry. I'm scared of your app. I know. Gina. Sorry. <laughs> How do I follow this? It's a really good alarm. Like you. Um, <laughs> yeah. You cannot sleep through that. Wow. <laughs> really good. It's still going. It's not gonna hear. All right. We can right, attempt to. Go, right. We're gonna press on. Okay. If you're like me, and I think you are, you probably use your phone too much, and, and people probably say, hey, look at me, don't look at your phone, and that sort of thing. If you've ever worried or were curious about how much you actually use your phone, uh, Break Free is the app that you probably want to install. It is an app that monitors your phone and app usage and then uh, tells you how much you're using. Uh, it applies a score based off the number of times that you unlock your phone, the number of times you interact with applications, the amount of time you spend on applications, and basically tells you whether you're addicted or not, whether you need to get away or not. It has a nice little merit system based off of uh, you actually not using your phone. Uh, so it's interesting because we do all probably use our phone too much, and sometimes you need hard numbers to actually prove that to you. Uh, they've got this cute little uh, animation to kind of uh, push it aside. But, uh, if, Brian, if you look at the screenshots, you can see... Uh, you can see basically what it, when you open up the app, it gives you a score based off how addicted you are and tells you how many times you've unlocked your your uh, your screen or used your phone. Um, they do it. It is free in the Android in the Google Play Store, but uh, you need to unlock the pro settings to get the app usage amounts. So if you go back to the app usage screen, there, Brian, you're going a little too fast there, buddy. Speedy, go to the next one. Nope. All right, Brian. That's one for all about Android. Um, um, so if you uh, look, so if you pay the dollar ninety nine, you can lock the pro thing. It will tell you how often you use it. So this particular user using Chrome for twenty five minutes, Facebook for ten minutes, etc. Um, you can 
uh, get individual statistics for individual apps. So for, for call usage in the next screen, you can see how many incoming calls you've got versus outgoing calls and the total call time, which is interesting. Uh, what's also neat is that it gives you function to control your phone to give you time away from your phone. So if you look at the next screen, you can see that you can use the app to disable notification sounds, disable all sounds, disable the internet, um, <laughs> reject all calls. You can auto text somebody calling you saying, hey, I can't use your take your call because I'm not using my phone. Um, and you can set the duration that this actually happens. So you can say, listen, I need a I need a half an hour time out. You can turn off basically everything on your phone, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then uh, the thing is, you know, it, it gives you enough control so that you can say, hey, listen, there's some apps that I do need to use. And you can actually exclude apps from your addiction score. So, like, listen, you know, Google Maps, really, like, that's actually a functioning app that I need. It's not part of my addiction. But, you know, 7 by 7 I'm totally addicted to. And I want to be told when I'm being addicted to it. Um, so I thought it'd be fun here if we can just take the over-shoulder shot. I've been using this app for eh, about 24 hours or so. And now live on camera, I'm going to open it up, and you can see what my addiction score is. Well, that so, looks like, is oh that boy. ice cream sandwich? <laughs> no, it's not. No, <laughs> okay. All right, you got it, Brian? All right, so we're going to open up Break Free, and it is going to check my phone. Oh, why didn't do that? Hang Get on. a life, Ron. Let's do it again. Ready? And so now it is, remind me later. Okay, it's going to calculate my score. And currently right now I have a 65. I've unlocked my screen 110 times, <laughs> and I've used my phone for an hour and a half. So uh, according to this, I am uh, going overboard. I'm out of control. You unlocked your screen um, 110 times in 24 hours? Yeah, less than 24 That's hours. That's my judging you voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case we're <laughs> unclear. Well, none of us have <laughs> ever Gina done and that. the app are judging <laughs> listen, you. Listen, so. you, you have a 45-minute commute to Berkeley from San Francisco, and, and, and you tell me how many times you unlock your phone. Jeez. <laughs> I never. I'm just um, with you. So what's what's really interesting is what's fun with this is that you know like whether depending on how serious you want to be about it, the the app is lighthearted. It kind of pokes fun at you and teases you. But some of the functionality is really neat. The limiting of um, of uh, functionality is interesting. I have a lot of friends who are writers and 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 try to control their interruptions. So if you're in a job or if you're in a position where you need to not be interrupted for a certain amount of time, it's really neat to be able to use this to say, okay, I'm going dark for an hour so I can bang this out. And that's kind of a neat way to do it um, and a fun way to do it. And they've got all the little game stuff. You can get your little, you get little gems and stuff like that for uh, green bar awards and things like that. Um, but it's safe to say that I am addicted to my phone. So sorry. Just, just think at yeah. how much Android Wear, the, the watch, will lower your addiction mm -hmm. score. Think about that. Although we'll, oh, we'll account, <laughs> yeah. we'll account yeah. into we'll it. Account. It will make it even worse. It, yeah, 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 exactly. Well, you don't so. really unlock the watch. Well, we don't know. We don't know. We're going to find know. out We're going to find out. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> all right. So break free. It's free in the uh, Google Play Store, $1.99 uh, in-app purchase to go pro to get the full unlocked, all the statistics and all that sort of stuff. But listen, if you are concerned about your phone use or you're concerned about someone else's phone use, break free is a great way to stage an intervention. So there you go. Good picks. Yeah. Good picks. Um, and I figured out the alarm. I just had to like take a couple of deep breaths. Take a breath and you finished the challenge? It, that was stressful. Yes, I finished the challenge. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't do fast and hard with the challenge. Man. And, and then and while you, you were talking, I could have swear I, I swear I heard the music like <laughs> suddenly again and it <laughs> it's going to keep you, it's going to keep you up You're going to hear it all night. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty It's hard and fast, man. Oh man. Right. Never, never. That would just that was no, that's no way to start a day. That's no. all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I'm totally with you, man. Okay. I hadn't even tried it. <laughs> Thanks all right. for the demo. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an effective app. Really good alarm <laughs> clock app. Okay, vote for your favorite app from this week by going to AAAPoll.com slash 167. Is it Towel Root by GeoHot? Uh, lifetime Alarm Clock, the world's most effective alarm clock ever. Uh, Abyss Attack or Break Free? Early reports are in. Oh, what are you going to vote for? Oh, okay. Look at that. Wow. Ta no. Towel yeah, root. There you go. So it's three votes. Yeah, we'll see. Lifetime impressive. alarm clock. I mean, these are all great apps. We'll see where this See, ends admittedly, up. break free makes you admit things about yourself. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a okay challenge. Exactly. Yeah. You've got to be willing to right grow. So, yeah. No. Um, and I've seen a couple of people in chat already that have said yes, they so ran. Uh, said Zcam they... said, I just did towel root on my Nexus 7, which had OTA 4.4.4, and it worked. Yeah, that's good news. That's cool. Right Interesting. Uh, so there you have it. This supersized episode of All About <laughs> Android. It. This has been a rough Ooh. two weeks, let me tell you, folks. <laughs> First with Jason being out and then free IO and then that alarm clock. Uh, that alarm clock is, uh, yeah, that's, you, man. that's the topper. 
Oh, yeah, it's not a bad thing, Gina. That's a really effective alarm clock. I'm trying to make an impression here. Yeah, well, no, you, you, made you, you made an impression. <laughs> I sent Jason away from the table. Never unprecedented. I didn't, I I never didn't happened know what to do before. I didn't he know what to literally, do. you ran. You ran. I'm going to make an animated GIF of that. Then we can yeah. still hear I don't it. Know how to make animated GIFs. I, I, I freaked. Someone on Tumblr can. Uh, well, I, I hope that you all enjoy that alarm clock as much as we did. And I know that Michael. It's just, it's always having you on right before Google I.O. So thank you for yeah, my making pleasure. a pilgrimage up to the Twit studio. Yeah, awesome. Our, our, annual, our annual event. That's, That's right. Nice. I like it. Uh, so where can people kind of follow the work that you're doing? What's you up to? Um, I don't really have anything to plug. MikeWolfson.com is where you can find me. Um, if you are looking to support some developers, just go pick a great app that you love and go rate them five stars. Any cool. app. Good, good right suggestion. Yeah, I like it. See, it's that attitude that got you as a developer expert. Yeah, that's good. So. I know. Right. I like yeah, it. It's yeah, a positive yeah, attitude. I dig it. I like that a lot. Good yeah. that Google's <laughs> recognized. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And at Mike Wolfson on Twitter. Cool. Yeah. Thanks again. And uh, My pleasure. Running into you tomorrow, I imagine. Uh, Ron? L literally running into you. Yeah. Yes, he's <laughs> running in to get his seat. As I'm looking <laughs> Running to watch. get his watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Fun times. All right. If you like this nonsense, you can go to about.me slash ronxo and you can go find my uh, links to Google Plus and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all that fun stuff. And by day, I'm over in Berkeley at Image Comics headquarters uh, helping to publish some of the best comics in the world. You can go to imagecomics.com uh, where you can actually t tomorrow on sale is uh, Outcast number one, which is a new comic book from Robert Kirkman of The Walking Dead. Oh. So very, we're very excited for that. It's a brand new uh, demons and exorcisms and stuff like that. So it should be, it should be pretty exciting. So sweet. The, the issues are already sold out, but you can get a uh, digital version at, Com at Comixology or at uh, on iBooks or Google the Google Play Store or on ImageComics.com. I'd imagine the TV, the hit TV show is a few years out. It's already in development, actually. Yep. It's so. less than that. Yep. Okay, there you go. There you go. Gina. It's awesome having you in studio. It's awesome it to be here. I don't know where to look. I'm like, look at all the cameras and the lights, and Jason's so tall. And like, I think I spit on Ron. It was crazy. It was really, really good to be I here. I spit on Ron every week. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty much yeah, it's a standard kind of. You know, There's the snapple yeah. right there. Yeah, it's it awesome. <laughs> it was really, really great to be here. I'm so excited for IO tomorrow. I'm going to yep. be back here in studio tomorrow uh, to do Twig oh, after right. the keynote. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really glad. Really good to be here. With you Yay. Guys. Cool. Yay. Uh, where can people follow the things you're up to? You can find everything that I'm working on at ginatrapani.org. When I'm not talking here on Twit, uh, I work on an app called ThinkUp, thinkup.com. Which is it's, awesome. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's so social networking analytics for, for humans, kind of fun facts about how you spend your time on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, I've also got a little Android app. It's called To Do Text, to do text.com. You can check it out. It's a little to do list, syncs up to Dropbox. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Fantastic. I like how my think up has become the default think up <laughs> example, by the way. Thank you for that, Brian. No <laughs> problem, Brian. Yeah, yeah, you man. should drop a few F bombs in your Twitter feed so that you get that. I actually update. don't, though, because I Ron we talked about this. I don't think think because my because my Twitter's linked to my Facebook. My mom's on Facebook. So oh, I, I yeah. don't curse See? on because I don't curse in front of like my parents. That. Like so, yeah, that. That's good. Uh, noble. That's but in person, whoa, noble. I got the I got oh, a yeah. potty mouth. Let me tell you. It's true. Uh Brian, you can attest to that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. As soon as Ron gets into the studio, the first thing I hear is F bombs dropping and stuff. So. <laughs> That's how he makes his uh, introduction. Yep. Yeah, it's true. Uh, what you got going on, Brian? Uh, not too much. Uh, when I'm not doing this show, trying to keep track of uh, if I'm beating the show or not. Uh, yeah, what, what's my score at right now? Anyway, like uh, I think I, I was losing by one. Yeah, you're losing by one. I'm pretty sure. I think it's I think it's four to three at this point. All right. Well, I'll try uh, and fix that next week. Yeah. Uh, but tomorrow I'll be TDing with, uh, this week in Google. So I'll see Gina again tomorrow. And um, awesome. I do know-how on Thursdays. And I'm about ready to go home. So what do you do, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> You're just rubbing it in. I'm not going home anytime soon tonight. <laughs> uh, you can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell. Uh, follow my musical exploits, yellowgoldmusic.com. Uh, catch my new show that launched a couple of weeks ago called Android App Arena. You may have heard of this arena thing which from is this it, show. I, I, as I was reinstalling apps on my old, new old phone, I installed Pocket Cast, and I was looking at the charts, and it, it is very high up in the charts yeah, on Pocket Cast. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. It's a nice little launch. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, uh, so this, this show, man, the Android App Arena, whew, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's, it's edited and uh, produced galore. Um, <laughs> live is a lot easier than oh, post-produced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have to figure out how to tighten it up a little bit. But I hope you enjoy it. Go to twit.tv slash arena to check out episodes of that. 
Uh, and uh, just before we, we wrap up, don't miss tomorrow's uh, live coverage, Twit's live coverage of the Google I.O. keynote. That's tomorrow morning, June 25th. A lot of you are going to be listening to this after the fact, but if you want to check it out, you still can. It's going to be the Tech News Today uh, re replacement show. Leo Laporte's going to be hosting that with a few special guests. Starts at 9 a.m. Pacific tomorrow morning. Leo and guests are going to, uh, you know, catch the keynote live with everybody in the chat room and talk about it and uh, discuss all the events that happen. That's live.twit.tv tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific. All right. Phew. Supersized episode of All About Android is done. That's it for this week. You can leave us a, vo a voicemail by going to 347-SHOW-AAA. You can send us an email. We're at AAA at twit.tv. We are on Twitter. We're at Android Show on Twitter. We're on Google+. Plus. We have a community as well as an account there, but just search for the community. That's where most people end up. Uh, on Reddit, we are twitaaa.reddit.com, where you can up and down vote stories that you want included in the show. I definitely look at that. Show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash aaa. You can also find our episodes on YouTube and iTunes, and you can catch us live every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. So for this week, we'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android.